All right, welcome to the Wednesday. Wow, it's the first September 7th, 2022, regular meeting of the Town of Easton Planning and Zoning Board. In keeping with an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by board members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards a quorum. The meeting will be broadcast live and recorded on ECAT. To use, to use Zoom, you use the link, which is listed on the planning board agenda, which you can get from the calendar on the front page of the town's website. While board members and applicants will be on video and audio, public participants will join the webinar as an attendee, meaning they are muted and with no video feed from them. During the public testimony portion of the meeting, members of the public can be recognized by using the raised hand function or the Q&A function. If joining by phone only, press star nine to raise your hand. Uh, board members are asked to announce themselves when making a motion and second, so it will be clear to audience and minute takers who made the motion. All votes will be by roll call. To ensure that we have a quorum, we will start with a roll call. Greg Strange, present. Peter DeShanes? Present. Stephanie, oh, <laughs> Robert Stetson? Present. Christopher Anderson? Present. And Deborah Balsarek? Present. Okay, so I still don't see a mass, so we will continue on. Um, and just for folks that are joining the meeting, um, just uh, everything on the agenda will be heard tonight with the exception of 534 Washington Street, the continued site plan review. We've received a, a request to continue till September 19th, and we will handle that at the time that comes up on the agenda. I just wanted to make sure. So um, first up, we have a continued discussion of internally illuminated signs for 99 Eastman Street plumbing supply. So uh, Nicole had her hand raised. I'm assuming she's here for that. Anyone else who's here? Here. Yes, I'm here for that. And then somebody else was supposed to be here from Plumber Supply. Do you know their name? Uh, Daniel. Well, if there's anyone uh, on right now uh, representing Plumber Supply, just please raise your hand so Stephanie can let you in. I don't see anyone, Greg, raising their hand. Nor do I. Do you want us to uh, jump ahead in the agenda and circle back with you, Nicole, or do you want to go ahead and take it? Um, why don't you circle back because he was the one that wanted to do the speaking. For the okay. Um, all right, so we will do that. We can move on to the uh, internally illuminated sign for 507 Pondy Street, Aroma Joe's. Um, Stephanie, are we expecting anyone to present from that or, you know? I don't think so. I think this is just a follow-up from the previous meeting. Oh, uh, I did not. Oh, if he had Drew Serbin. There's a right hand raised. Let's see what yes. that's for. Correct. There we go. Uh, Mr. Serban, are you there? Oh, he's muted and... Uh... Hi there. Hi, and uh, if, if, I'm just sorry, who are you representing today? Which project? Yeah, I'm, I'm Drew Serban from Burr Signs. Uh, we're the sign company that's doing the, um, that's gone through this whole process for uh, Aroma Joe's. Okay. All right, well, the, the floor is yours, I guess. Okay. Um, I honestly don't know what this meeting is for, to be to be hundred percent honest with you, other than to determine whether or not the signs are illuminated. So what um, Suzanne had said was that I should be prepared to um, show the um, the sign package, share my screen, and show the sign package as it's been sort of drilled down. And uh, 
and then beyond that, um, be available for questions um, uh, and so on. So. Um, okay, so if I could just interrupt you for a second. So as I understand, you guys went, to, you went to ZBA, right? <clears throat> I'm not, and I must confess, I'm not fully aware of the results of that. So uh, can you present that? Or oh, stuff 100%, yeah. So okay. we, went to, we, right. went to, we went to ZBA to uh, add a second building sign, which is not within code. Um, and in the parking lot, a smaller sign, um, it was denied. Um, I actually just got it in the mail today. Uh, but it was denied. And so what we've put forward and what's been what's now presented as part of the the uh, testimony or whatever, whatever we call it um, at this point is the revised package that shows one building sign, which is part of which is allowed by code one um, pylon sign also allowed by code um, and uh, two uh, small non illuminated directionals. Um, and that is all that's that's all that's in there now we've sort of we've condensed it all down so it was um as as um unobtrusive as possible i guess gotcha all right so um okay so the drawing i'm looking at still shows two um is there is it right am i wrong i, I see a sign at the front of the building and then a sign over the the uh, <clears throat> accessible entrance we, we resubmitted last week all new drawings um, to um, code enforcement um, at, at, at their request. Um, so I, I would have assumed that for this, you would have had the most current, okay. um, but I, I certainly can, can share. Um, um, oh, if you have it available, yeah, why don't you share your screen? Uh, can, and Suzanne or Stephanie, can, can we confirm that we've received? Yes, and in the binder, what we had was the sign um, the, uh, it actually says left side elevation. So I, I clicked on the agenda. That's what I would, that's what I went by since I had it out. So that's a different file. Um, I, it seems it probably is a link to a different file because right. what I'm showing is they have the left side elevation has the Aroma Joe's um, channel letters. And then they have the pylon sign. And then they show the, uh, blow up of the channel letters and the incidental signs, the directionals. Right. So if Drew's sharing his screen, he can show those. Sure can. You guys can see my kids and my family. All right. Can you see this? No, no not yet. Hmm. I see right. somebody's screen now. Oh, there we go. All right. Greg, I don't see. Oh, no, that's the that's something else that opened up. Hey, there you go. So, oh, there we all go. right. So this is the revised sign package. So this is the <clears throat> it says left side elevation, but technically this is the front. This is the 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 elevation that faces um, 106. Sure. 106 yeah, yep. exactly. um, so that's the um, the 180 inch letter set on the front. Um, this is the pylon sign um, uh, also in that elevation or that that side of the street, excuse me. Um, we let's see. Um, this is the what the letter set looks like uh, blown up. These are the incidental signs which are um, non illuminated. Um, and this is the, the site plan, which shows um, number one is the pylon sign, um, which is the same location that the original one, the original sign that was for that bank was there as well. Um, number two is the, that, that channel letter set on the building. Um, and numbers three and four are the enter um, directional um, is number three. And then the exit directional, of course, is number four. Um, and that is that is it. All right, um, Stephanie, do you have anything to? to no, add? no. I think what the board, other than at the last meeting, um, what we had in our notes was that the board said they would support the pylon sign um, if they uh, eliminated one of the side signs, which they've done. 
one of the, I'm sorry, one of the wall signs. Right, that's, that's my memory. Although I, I see that the pylon is illuminated. I don't, I'm not sure where the board left with that. So I'll, board members, uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts. I recall that we discussed, you know, the extent of the illumination. Um, so now we're presented with two illuminated signs. So we could um, consider those as is. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, if that's a pro you know, an appropriate kind of, um, you know, presentation for this property in the area. Maybe like, you know, what would happen in the future in similar situations. So it sounds like you're not in favor of illuminating the pylon? Not necessarily. I mean, it seems right. to be to be determined. Reasonable, I guess. but then you know. Yeah, I understand. We we haven't we haven't done it before, and um, yeah, and and the, and the pylon is just a uh, basically a it's a it's not yeah it's just a lit, it's just a lit box, isn't it? It's not it's not uh, the, there's no depth to letters, correct? Correct. Right. Correct. And I and and just so we're clear, if 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 the board allows these. The, the illuminated signs to go forward um, as, as we've done here in Maine and there's certainly other municipalities both in New Hampshire and Massachusetts that we worked in that that have a, a policy where you can do a sign that has a white face during the day but at night we actually black out all the white so all you see illuminated at night are the letters A-R-O-M-A-J-O-E apostrophe S and so on you don't see that as you know, we'll call it, you know, blight, you know, illumination blight or anything like that. It, we can, we can tone that down too as well. If that, if that is of any interest, I guess, I guess what I would say and, and was, was, was something that, that I was thinking is that it's almost any other. And, and again, I understand that you're, that the code is, is, is what it is. Um, but almost every limited service restaurant type chain like this that lives and dies by drive through service that's in that general area, whether it's up by CVS where Dunkin' Donuts and Burger King are, or coming down that street, they all have an illuminated building, you know, uh, sign on the road, and they all have an illuminated building sign. So it's I, my my only concern, and I, and I, and trust me, I understand why the code's there, I do, um, is just, is just the competitive disadvantage that a, that a new business that, you know, is trying to come into town would possibly be put at. If they didn't have that opportunity, and and that's why I think <laughs> in Oxford, many many times have been there too. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't just just to give you a little bit of the history, Drew. Um, okay. Those those examples you brought up pre predate the bylaw. Uh, okay. The town of Easton, the citizens. It wasn't this board; it was the citizens. Uh, I don't know, fifteen years ago, uh, wanted to get rid of illuminated signs uh, for because we would, you know, and but then that became not realistic. And in, in, in some situations, uh, and, and yeah, sometimes not, not looking to disadvantage. So we we actually schooled the, the planning board at the time, which several of the members are still on here. We a few signing companies come in and we went through the different types of signs and you know channel letters and light boxes. So we've been trying to up that, trying to up the uh, the aesthetic, if you will, and and you know because we're not looking to make this area. And in fact, that's why the drive through. <laughs> As this board would tell, I, I was vehemently against this the drive through right. at its onset, but you know, to make Peach go along. But when, when we just re, we just rewrote zoning for this district a year ago, say, well, who's making that noise? Can they mute this? Um, and, um, you know, we, we weren't looking for another, you know, honestly, you know, there's, there's lots of different types of business. You know, we were like, okay, can we get away from we need a bright sign to get someone to come to our drive through with sure. an ATM? wasn't really what we're looking to do I don't you know but um, but anyways our de our decision stands so this would this is the first time anybody's ever come to us looking uh, as best in my recollection uh, for light up pylon uh, and, and for two two light up signs because um, this is not we haven't been going in that direction and we're trying to Easton you know we're trying to make it stand out and not become like every other um, you know uh, developed commercial area with no thought. You know, we're trying sure. to actually create a village and, and uh, you know, so anyways, um, all right, board members, um, I'm, I'm sort of with Peter. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't believe that the Aroma Joseph says it right on the front, the buildings are right on top of the street. And I'm looking, I, I, I don't think they're going to miss business if the sign doesn't light up, but 
that's just me. Um, as you know, uh, I, I don't try to, to force decisions down people's throats. So I, I just gave to Drew my, 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 the background of this whole thing. I'm so um, agree with me, disagree with me, just like to hear your thoughts or if someone wants to make a motion or however you guys want to go about this is fine with me. I mean, I agree, I agree with you and Peter. <clears throat> so you're equally ambiguous. <laughs> I like the idea uh, that Drew brought up that during the evening hours, the white portion would be darkened or blacked out. I think that would be, I think that would be positive. Um, but I also, uh, we might have already discussed this, or maybe this happened at the last meeting, but I, I think we just mentioned that we discussed the pylon sign would be okay if one of the wall signs was removed, but I'm just wondering, given that the proximity of the building and the pylon sign are so close to the street, um, would it not make sense to have the wall, the building sign be on a side face as opposed to the front face? But maybe I missed that discussion. Well, I, I don't, I, I would hesitate to, to you know, if we're only giving them one sign on the building, I think we should allow them to decide where. Um, and I think last week, yeah, during our conversations, um, our last meeting, um, I think the board felt they would prefer the front, but we, but we said either one. Um, so, and the sign, and just because yeah. you brought it up, I, I looked, I was reviewing the code over the weekend and the pylon um, is allowed to be no closer than 15 feet to the street, which is what it shows on the plan. And it's at the height um, for for safety, for safety, traffic safety. At first, I was like, "Why is this so darn big?" Because the building is close to the street, but luckily, it moves up in elevation a little bit. So, so. so um, I'd be interested in that um, the darkening option, if that's something worth considering. It seems like it might be. Yeah, I don't even think it's an that... option, right? That's what you're doing, correct, Drew? My apologies. Say it again. So, as I understand it, De Deborah was talking. About, so, the 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 pylon. What you're saying during the day, just like in your drawing, the body's white, but at night it's black. Correct. Yeah, it'll look it'll look just like it does right now during the day in the drawing, but at nighttime, the only thing illuminated will be the actual text. It won't. So you won't yeah, have all that. Extra. Gotcha. So it appear less like a light block light box. It'll yeah, it would, it would appear. Right. Like, uh, it's made to have sort of a halo, a halo look. Yep. Right, sort yep. Of. One other thing I just wanted to note is that the illumination hours are only going to be from five to seven in the morning and five to nine at night. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll be there tracking it to to enforce that. <laughs> I don't know how that. Works. I'm teasing. Right. No. Hey, it's always good that. Right. I mean, that's what that's um, that's within the bylaw. You're allowed. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it's a sensitive enough sign. I, I'm, if we can give it a spin if we want. We can live and learn. Um, we, we, but uh, there will be no adding a light up ATM uh, to this pylon in the future. So if this is a, just, just be forewarned. No, no, no <laughs> electronic mission center with full motion. Yeah, yeah, they don't want yeah. that. Save you the application fee. Well, to, to not let Greg's words go to waste, um, I'd still prefer this one, one illuminated sign. That way, that's a good. Good template to kind of start with as um, you know into this rebuilding phase um, in the, in the area. So why does it? Why don't you put that in a motion form if you'd like? Let's see where it goes. We make a motion to approve the revised plan, um, so long as um, the um, applicants choose only one sign to be illuminated. Is there a second? I hear there's not going to be a chair can't make a second. I hear. All right. So there's no okay. second. I, I seconded it. All right. There's a second. All right. Um, so any further discussion? And any I should ask if there's any comments from the audience. I see none. I hear none. Um, any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. DeShane, Peter DeShane. Aye. Robert Stetson. Aye. Deborah Balsarek. Deborah Balsarek. Oh, she said, <laughs> I, uh, you I said know. yes. Okay, I didn't yeah, hear it the first time, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, Christopher Anderson. Aye. And Gregory Strange, aye. That's in no Hamas, though, right? Yeah, no. No. Okay, so uh, the motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you, sir. Good luck. Can I ask for clarification? Uh, yeah. So I understood that one of the two signs, and again, I have to get with the customer to determine which one they want. Um, right, either the one on the either the uh, either the pylon or the one on the building can be. A yeah, I assume, I assume it will be the pylon. With that said. Um, the concern, to my understanding, is is in t uh, internally illuminated signs. If we were to put the sign on the building, you and can have put a spotlight on it. Yep. You have to put gooseneck. You have that. to come to us for that. That's right. That externally illuminated is allowed. Okay. All right. Very good. Then I will let them know. It looked better if you illuminated the pylon and kept the the building lit up. Mm. But anyways, mm -hmm. that's just me. So all right. Thank you, sir. Just when you make your decision, just uh, let uh, Stephanie's office know. Of course. So we should memorize. All right. Thank you very much. Will do. Thanks very much. All right. All right. Um, next up, zoom in. We have, oh, okay. Uh, plumber surprise, supply. Um, Nicole, did your party show up? You know? And if Nicole could raise her hand again, she because did. I don't see her. There she is. <clears throat> Nicole, you there? Oh, you are. Oh, can't hear you. You're muted. Okay, sorry about okay. that. So did your presenter show? I don't know. Do you guys have a Dan or Daniel that you can see? If there's anyone here, I don't see one. If there's anyone here from Plumber Supply, could you please raise your hand? But I don't see anyone named Daniel. So we no. have two choices. Oh, you can, uh, we can just push it back in the order. We just keep my, our next uh, hearing is going to go, uh, it's probably going to be pretty long, about an hour or so, I would think. Um, and um, and then we, you know, I can jump you in after that if you want, or if you want to come back at our next meeting. Um, well, I mean, I can tell you what he wanted. He wanted to keep the sign boxes. That's what he was going to come and talk to you guys about. I know you guys didn't want the sign boxes, and I relayed that information to them. And I know he was interested in keeping the sign boxes. Okay. Um, um, kind of why he was going to talk. But I'm not sure. sure. But, 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 okay, so um, Peter, go ahead. Is this the um, the um, the building on the way. This is a uh, plumber way? supply. Yeah, this is yeah. Um, on the right on the way to Mansfield on 106. Yes. Yep. And they remember they had um, they had um, a large, very large uh, plumber supply. In fact. Do you, um, anybody want to share their screen? I can share my screen, Greg. So Nicole, this, uh, I, there was something I heard. To, so the, the Dance Express sign is coming down, correct? No, there's a new Dance Express sign oh, that they wanted to that's, put up. Okay, I got you. Um, it's under 20 square feet. So they said that it would be an incidental sign. I see. So the elevation you show, right. So the elevation you show is, is both. Um, okay. I got you. Mm -hmm. And the, Greg, this area is supposed to be uh, motion, right? It flows. And I, the board received a video of that. Right. So here's the, here's the, uh, <clears throat> Uh, I mean, for those who weren't here last week, just a quick review, you know, again, same thing I said about the last time, but uh, animation is uh, is specifically called out 
uh, is not being allowed. Um, and again, up to interpretation, maybe, maybe Stephanie and I were talking about this today. We, the board may, may can, can allow it and consider it internally illuminated when it's done with LED. Um, and I had asked, and I, I, I think other members of the board at last week's meeting, uh, if, if the plumber supply company, the large, it's just a large light box right now. And as you know, again, not, you know, to beat a dead horse, but we've been trying to improve the, the aesthetic of signs and instead of having a, just a large plexi box we had asked them to do the plumber supply in channel letters. And I thought, thought that would be a good trade-off. Cause I, I said, I wouldn't mind that animation, you know, might be okay. It was like a big bright sign that had, you know, sale items. Um, but, in, and as you guys know, you've all been on this board for a while. We have, we have turned down a lot of signs, a lot smaller than this that were new and were light boxes. We've sort of been anti light box. Um, and so, that's where we're at. And as Nicole said, so they haven't changed anything and they came back and they're just looking. Um, so I'd throw it out to the board and uh, ask for your thoughts and comments or if you wanna make a motion or not make a motion, whatever you want to do. And Stephanie, I don't mean to exclude you if you have any thoughts too. I, don't wanna... I, I think without seeing the, how the, that water is going to flow, <laughs> Um, I mean, the video just showed the water flowing. It didn't show it coming out of the faucet. It didn't show it on a sign, um, you know, like a, an existing sign or anything. I think sure. that. Yeah, I think the water flowing sounds kind of kind of cool. And uh, the channel letters are a nice idea. Um, but having missed the last meeting, I'll just defer um, to any other. Okay, but they're that. saying they don't want to do the channel letters, just so you understand. Yeah, I got it. Where we're yeah. At. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, so I'll just... No problem. To, um, so uh, Deb, Chris, or um, Bob, do you guys have any thoughts? Well, I watched the video and I have uh, read the definition of animated sign. And I mean, I believe this is an animated sign. It's, it's any sign which uses movement or change of light to depict action or to create a special effect or scene. I'm not sure how we could... <laughs> approve it with the way that that's worded yeah and that, that oh that and that's from our bylaw what you just read just, it, yeah. that's that's the, the definition the from the yeah. bylaw yep. exactly yep. so i mean uh, i i have a tough time with with that even before we get to the box issue sure okay um Chris oh. or, or uh, Deb or anybody, any more thoughts? So Greg, uh, Greg, Chris, I was going to say I think uh, Rob's uh, opinion trumps, or not opinion, but understanding of the rule. So yeah, you agree with about uh, that, uh, Stephanie? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, you know, I was just opening up to the section of the bylaw you and I were talking about today, but let's see. Okay, I just want to respond to Rob's, uh, to Bob's comment. So the way the bylaw reads, Bob, is in section G5, flashing animated or, inter and, and we all, we agree. I mean, Greg and I both agree that it is animated. It is um, a moving light including LED and non-neon, not specifically allowed by the planning board and is further prohibited in 23529J. And then if you go to that, it looks like it gives the board discretion. So where it says not specifically allowed by the planning board, I believe what might have been intended there was the planning board could approve it. But, but it requires approval by the board. But the, um, the zoning enforcement officer who would normally weigh in on this is um, not in the office this week. And then um, if you go to, let's see, J4B, movement of a sign body or any segment thereof, such as rotating, revolving, moving, up or down or any other type of action seem to refer to the 
the physical structure of the sign. So like a Sitgo sign that sits on a pole and rotates, or if you had a sign that had a component within it that moved. Well, if, if the zoning can- See what you're saying. Me? So, so what I, I think what you're saying, Stephanie, and I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you now that I'm looking at it for a second time, is that there's a distinction between an animated sign and a flashing sign. Flashing signs are prohibited, but animated signs, which are not considered flashing signs, may be approved at our discretion. That's your interpretation. My interpretation is that flashing animated or internally illuminated could, could be approved by the board, but they need to be approved by the board. They aren't by right. The board, um, in order for someone to install one of these types of signs, the board has to give approval. That, that's why you get all the internally illuminated. We haven't received, I, I can't remember a moving or an animated or flashing sign any time in the recent past, if you we've, nev we've never had one. In fact, it was a flat. Yeah. It was the flashing sign. You weren't at the last meeting so at CVS uh, on Washington Street at the intersection of Belmont. That led to the citizens' revolt. That led to um, you know, oh, Colleen, right. Colleen yeah. Corona uh, advocating for us to eliminate and, and uh, illuminated signs. Well, J J four A actually says flashing signs shall not be permitted in any district. But I think what Stephanie is saying is yeah. that there's okay, yes, yes. You but are. I think what you're saying is there's a distinction. Now, flashing signs may be considered an animated sign, but animated sign is is more broad than flashing signs. Yep. So, and, and I think I agree you, with you. Yes, I, yes. It depends on how the animation is achieved. Uh, if it's achieved through flashing, then it's not allowed. That's that's right. And so here's here's the definition of flashing. A sign which contains an intermittent or sequential flashing light source used primar primarily to attract attention. Does in theory, and that probably needs to be rewritten because in theory, an LED is a flashing, an uh, LED is a strobe. <laughs> well, and I, and I wonder about how the, sequ the sequential nature of the way that this is well, gonna wait. create that waterfall effect actually is considered flashing. I, I'm throwing it out there. I don't disagree with Stephanie's interpretation here, I'm, but I'm still thinking that maybe this is a flashing sign. Yeah. Yeah, man, I think, you know, I, I think because this isn't life or death, I think the bylaw gives us, I mean, you know how bylaws are. We, we could, they're always in, no matter how much you write or rewrite, they, you're going to find some ambiguity or some different interpretations. Uh, I was of the ilk at the last meeting that, okay, I thought no, I, I agree kind of with Stephanie said. I thought, okay, I thought we could make the animation work. And, and, you know, but I'm still stuck because, uh, you know, with this, it's a giant light box. And I, I'm thinking of all the property owners that are going to scream at us because we didn't let them do light boxes, new ones. And this, this one's enormous. Um, and I, it's unfortunate if they would just come back. I, I like the faucet, little animation. I, I, I alluded to the crane sign up the street. I like when a sign has a little character. And, I, and this is an industrial area. So maybe we can be a little more lenient but but again even in the industrial park um unless it was replacing an, an, an existing um you know like the dance express right now it's a light box it's around the corner they want to replace it with a light box uh, okay i'm fine with that but in the back i mean but but the but the main one up top um you know it's brand new and i you know and it's it's um and and even in the past i mean i don't i'm i'm not sure i totally agree with the sign uh, area that they've calculated because they, you know, it depends. Do you go to the ext extremities of the faucet or do you, you know, so, but, um, so I, I think the, you know, so we got the, the animation issue and then we have the light box issue. So, um, where are we at? Um, if I can just mention, um, the customer was trying to fight that it's not in the bylaws to not have a sign box. 
Right, but it's in the bylaws that you can't have internally illuminated unless you get a permit from us. And and um, try you and I don't know, you know, ask your fellow workers at Sign Design. They've been before us dozens of times, and and this is consistent with what we've been doing for I don't know, probably eight eight to ten years, I guess, since this this came out. Um, and it's just trying to, you know, I mean, the cost of channel letters versus the sign box isn't in the scheme of things isn't that large and and we really think it improves the aesthetic um and that's we're all about property value in easton because we don't have much uh, business zoning so we rely off an awful lot and we, we try to keep the bar high and that might sound silly on a sign but i think in the long run it's attention to details that, that pays off and keeps our property values up which helps which helps a lot when you don't have uh Highway access and a lot of commercial space. So, so for the flowing sign, would we go out on the limb and um, accept that we we could allow that based on the um, the bylaw as we just discussed? Yeah, yeah, but I would I would do what I said last week. I would support that with channel letters, but I I, I can't yeah, vote okay. for a giant sign box because we've just it's just I'd feel terrible for all the people we said no to. Okay, so let's try that. I mean, let's try to suggest that, and um, Nicole can um, you know come back with talk to the owner and they can come back to the next meeting with their um, final final or next well with their next version and we'll see how that looks I suppose yeah I'm not sure why they didn't come tonight but I will definitely relay this message to them again yeah, that's okay okay well thank you Nicole Bye. we appreciate your patience and uh, but we we love our community that's why we take these things to heart but uh, and to, you know Plumber Supply, tell them it'll, we, we, we like them as a neighbor and, and we'd love if they did channel letters. <laughs> so, all right. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right, kids. Um, can you guys not hear me? I can hear you. Now we can. Oh, why, did you say something we didn't, we didn't well, hear I you before. I wanted, you, yeah, I don't <laughs> no, know, I've been on, on mute, but I'm not, I'm not sure why. I just wanted to say that, um, I think that there were a couple of issues that we're talking about. One is obviously an aesthetic issue and what's appropriate. And then obviously a part of our job as being on the planning board is to project the health, safety and welfare. And so I think it, it's difficult just watching the video to, and the subsequent discussion about the animation as to whether this is at all just distracting and would at all create any other issue. And so I guess um, I personally am not in favor of it unless we were able to see something closer to what is going to be built and, um, you know, everyone's interpretation is consistent with what the bylaw is. Okay. Uh, hey, so uh, Suzanne or Stephanie, can we, can I see, um... Nicole's gone, but can we reach, do we have contact in for her just to send her a note and say, hey, um, can you get us a better example of the animation? Like, we yeah, certainly yeah. can. It doesn't have to be in a faucet, just on a building yeah. somewhere. So. Yep, it, and I, I, I concur with that because I'm still not convinced that we have the discretion to approve that. I, I would like to see it a little bit better in action if we could. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. Okay, great. Thanks, Deb. Sorry, sorry we couldn't hear you. <laughs> All right, so next up, um, let's see, after 24, 32 months, I think, after a 32 month hiatus, uh, Rick Lincoln and his team have decided to grace us with their presence. Um, you will all remember 560 Foundry Street. We, we wake up in the middle of the night, we go continue, continue, right? Because we've done it so many times. Uh, Sawmill Village, it's a um, special permit uh, for the compact neighborhood, uh, the compact neighborhood uh, overlay district that we created maybe five years ago, six years ago. Um, so um, Rick and his team will, will fill us in, but they've just about wrapping up uh, with, with conservation. So, you know, I said I, we didn't want to see until they were done with that because no sense, you know, I don't want to do a conditional approval. Um, so they're going to give us, since it's been so long, they're going to give us uh, an overview of the project, um, refresh memories, refresh memories of the public. Uh, and then they'll, I, I asked Rick, I spoke with him the other day, and I said, if you could just give a brief, you know, Stephanie and I have been sort of kept in the loop as it went along, but just brief uh, 
point out any any substantial changes since we were all together last. Um, and then we will, I'm imagining we'll have a few people in the audience. So what we'll do is uh, we'll open it up to the to the board, for Stephanie for her report, we'll open it up to the board, questions, comments. And I'll open it to the public. And I would just remind everybody that there is, um, you know, it's been a while. I just, uh, you know, it seems silly to say this, but let's, um, you know, come up with questions or, or comments regarding where the, where the project's at now. Um, let's not try to repeat what we went through the first two meetings, but not that I can expect everybody to remember that. But so don't get mad at me if I move us along. So with that, um, Rick, I'll open up to you. And if you just, you know, name and address for the record. And uh, are you going to be sharing a screen? Or how are you going to do this? Uh, Megan's with me here. Uh, hi, Megan. Um, and thanks for having us tonight, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Megan will, can share her screen. Um, I was going to go through the history like really quick, yeah. you know, five or 10 minutes if, if you want. Um, That'd be great. But, but first, I want you to give you names and addresses for the record. It okay. was legal. Uh, Rick Lincoln, uh, applicant, uh, and Megan Dutra is with uh, Conoco Engineers, uh, the engineering firm behind all this. <clears throat> All right, the floor is yours. So um, we, I bought the property in late 2017, uh, the east side, and then I ended up buying the west side, closer to Target, uh, and across the stream in late 2018. Uh, we got with the town early, and by the town, I mean uh, Conservation Commission planning, uh, town administrator, to just try and um, ferret out what was the um, kind of highest and best use, you know, what everybody wanted to see there. And after several iterations, you know, we were up at 60 some odd single family homes at one point, we had a bunch of town homes at one point, duplexes, and it has been distilled down to, uh, that's some of the early plans right now that um, Megan is showing. Uh, we decided with the town that, that that was one I thought was, gonna, was going to happen. Um, but unfortunately that um, there's a section of the road that was off uh, property, which is, uh, currently town-owned land, and that, that was going to take a, an act of God to try and get that one through. So um, we eliminated that and came in through the north side of the site, and we've trimmed the units down to 44 single-family homes, uh, and the homes, have, as I think everyone knows, uh, all comply with the um, the bylaw, so they don't exceed 1,800 square feet. They're two bedrooms. Uh, we are doing full foundations out there. Um, and uh, the elephant in the room, obviously, is what's taken us so long. So um, it, the, the, there's a stream that, um, there's actually two streams that kind of surround the west side of the site. And there are also a couple of vernal pools. Uh, the vernal pools, actually, we could have dealt with fairly quickly, but it's the, it's the stream and the floodplain and, and FEMA not having mapped that area. And it, and it became very complicated with, with you know, a million different iterations, um, a lot of micro grading, some replication plans. Um, so Conservation Commission, rightfully so, uh, you know, was doing their job trying to protect the environment and everything. And, and, um, and so were the town's review engineers. So there was a lot of scrutiny. Um, we ended up negotiating a memorandum of understanding with the town. Um, so there are a lot of improvements that are planned for Foundry Street, which includes a road widening on both sides. Uh, actually, we're, we're pulling the road into our property and um, giving the town can't remember what it is, 10 or 15 feet of, of land to make this thing work uh, with a street light out there. So there'll be turn lanes on, on both the east side and the west side of the Quantica with a street light. Uh, and then a, a, a certain fee to the town, I'll call it a mitigation fee per unit. 
Um, so that also helped us um, through Conservation Commission because they were they were obviously looking for for appropriate mitigation too, um, you know, given the impact on on that west side there. Uh, it's a it's the the east side is an old foundry site as everybody knows. Um, it was clean uh, as per uh, DEP and and all state records. There was a big cleanup um, done before way before I got involved with it. Um, but before I bought it, we also felt we wanted additional assurances. So I drilled the site, you know, we, we popped holes into an old septic system. We tested the stream, you know, and everything came up clean, except for there was one maybe 20 foot square hot spot that exceeded thresholds. And we, we, uh, picked that up and, and hauled it away and disposed of it. Um, so I, I know it's been a long time. Hopefully nobody forgot about us. Um, the, I'll let Megan kind of wax eloquent, you know, on, on, on some of the engineering issues. But to my knowledge, not much has changed. Uh, I'll call it the upland, you know, the non-wetland um, non areas. Not much has changed, if much at all. Um, you know, the house types are the same, the, the, the footprints, the, the locations, um, all that stays the same. Uh, there was a period of time where we were doing all garage rears, but when we started looking at all the tall re retaining walls required and backing out of the garage, we, we ended up, um, and I think we, we discussed that in the last meeting or two, long time ago, uh, with you folks and you know we ended up with the site plan that we have now so you'll see a couple of garage fronts there um, but it's it's all on the plan and then nothing has changed in that regard um, so uh, Megan I don't know if you want to jump in um, sure. maybe talk about the engineering a little bit so as Rick said a lot of what's really been happening since we've seen you is kind of working with conservation to get them more comfortable with the impacts that we were creating basically on the resource areas on the site, as well as uh, working with Water and Curran um, for the flood, uh, floodplain issues. Uh, what really ended up happening for the floodplain is we continued to use the FEMA's map floodplain for the Mulberry Brook and just uh, delineated that based on the actual um, topographic elevations we have for the site. And then for the Beaver Brook, we went through and did a heck grass that Woodard and Curran peer reviewed and accepted, which is the one that you see here in blue. The gray is the original uh, FEMA floodplain for this area. Um, I think another thing that we kind of went through with conservation is the area that is going to be donated to the town, uh, which on this map you see is in green, as well as the uh, parking area here and connection to the uh, Eastern Trail system. Um, otherwise, I think a lot of what's kind of just been happening is going through order of conditions and a lot of kind of construction sequencing of when things should be done uh, to adequately provide for uh, protections for wildlife. Um, I think the only other things from the engineering side of things that changed was a bit of grading in this area behind the houses which I can pull up the grading plan for you. Megan, if you don't mind, while you're, while you're pulling up that plan, you may want, sure. I forgot about the, uh, the daylighting of the stream, which was actually another important piece for, for everybody. So what, as Rick was just saying, uh, part of the project was for that Beaver Brook um, 
related to the floodplains. We did do one uh, existing floodplain that was based on the conditions of the site after the culvert that is currently existing here that connects the two parts of Beaverbrook is taken out, which is a part of the project. Uh, so that culvert is being removed and the stream is being restored to connect the two sections along with associated wetland area and uh, riverfront area mitigation that will be planted. Uh, so for the floodplain, we did that as an existing conditions and the proposed conditions is after the rest of the site is constructed meaning that the uh, stream restoration is actually part being permitted as a limited project in and of itself as a culvert removal. Megan, so since we've met the board last, has, has anything changed within the, within the development part of the site? Grades, anything? So I'm scrolling up to that now, but the only things that have changed currently on the site are one second. Okay. So what has changed in the site since we saw you last really has been graded in this area, which was really related to floodplain mitigation as well as graded here uh, as part of the floodplain mitigation and as part of wetland replication mitigation. Um, you can still only see the uh, trail connectivity drawing. Okay. Yeah, the screen's not, there it is. Nope. Yeah. Can you see it now? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, no, it's... Um, so... Uh, as I was saying, it was the gradient in this area for the uh, floodplain mitigation, as well as the gradient here for floodplain mitigation and for wetland replication. The only other changes that have been made were the culverts under the road here and here, which were originally provided for hydraulic connection just to make sure the wetlands there weren't going to be flooded out. Those have been upsized and changed to box culverts and provided with some uh, basically backfilling so that wildlife can use that as uh, a connection from one wetland to the other. Megan, do you mind po pointing out the retaining walls on that west side? Sure. So on this west side, the retaining wall runs from the cross in here, right down along this way, along the back of the houses, through here where the trail connection is, and it ends here at the this back basin. Uh, it picks up again on the other side, right here by this house, runs to that house, and then there's another wall that runs this way to this basement and connects back with the crossing. And approximately, if I could just, well, since you're on that, I'm sure, I know it varies, but what's the rough average height of the, of the wall for, for those in the audience? Uh, some of it runs as low as four feet and other areas can run up to 10 feet, I believe. And that's going to be all native uh, stone, right, Ray? <laughs> It would look nice. I assume it's concrete. Yeah, the right, the the uniblocks there, paved paved stone. Go ahead, Megan. Sorry. Uh, as I said, that's actually right about everything that's really changed with the project. It doesn't seem like much, as as I said, most of what we did was more of kind of documentation and wildlife mitigation really in the past few months and making sure that conservation was comfortable with what was happening on the site, as well as the uh, mitigation efforts that we were providing for the project. 
Um, if, if there are any specific questions, I'd be happy to take those, or if there was anything that you wanted a refresher on. Okay, can, do you mind just pulling back to the main entrance just so everybody can take a look at that again? To, because that'll be kind of an important piece. Right. You know, it'd be good too. At the very beginning, you showed sort of the history and you showed the plan when it was 46 lots back the last time we saw you in January of 19. Mm -hmm. And then we're at today. So it, if you want to show them, <laughs> 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 if you want to show, um, you show that just so the board can can see. Yeah, so I think because basically, know you know, like I said, <clears throat> Stephanie and I would be kept up with some of the changes and you know the some retaining walls came in and then a, a couple houses if i recall two or three had to become front load garages you know more than we had seen just because of what was happening at concom um yeah so there no no there was one there was one, there was one after this so, oh there we go so here's here's where we saw them last so you, you can kind of see the road layout um and you know, see the house is 46. And then Megan, if you go to the next one, please. There. So you can you can see the, the, the majority of on the left side there were it kind of split off. Um, it was shaped a little bit by Concom. But all in all, it's it's pretty much the same. Still has the public, the parking area for the public access to to the green space out back. Um, and so anyway, sorry, I didn't, didn't mean to hijack your presentation. No worries. So, Board members uh, or Stephanie, do you have any? Do you want to talk about where where things are at with Concom or any? I know we've all read your report and everything. I just know if there's anything you want to add. Um, I would say that you know Rick mentioned that um, this was a complicated project, and in part because of the wetland resources, um, but substantially because of the floodplain not being depicted accurately on the flood maps the FEMA flood maps, and that's because it was not surveyed. This portion, um, the larger portion of the floodplain was not a surveyed plan. Um, it took a lot of work. When Megan mentioned HECRES, that's a modeling analysis that's done to determine what, as I understand it, Megan, and I'm not an engineer, but to determine what, where the floodplain actually is. And then if you, um, in modeling that, and then determining what your impact is going to be because there is some change to that floodplain and there's compensatory storage that needs to be provided. So there, there was a lot of work that needed to go into this and the review process was extensive and very complete. Um, you know, if everyone's read my report then I don't need to go through much of it. I mean, one of the things that again, in seeking waivers from the Conservation Commission that required that they demonstrate that there would be no adverse impact on the wetland resource areas, that there were no practicable alternatives to um, the project as proposed, and that there had to be a benefit in the interest of the public. And that did not need to be tied directly to wetland resources, but some of those benefits did include daylighting the stream. That was an environmental benefit and improvement at the site. Uh, prior to that, that, that stream at least currently is culverted. Um, daylighting that will recreate, will create more natural resource area, both for wildlife and in improve um, the hy hydrology on the site. Other benefits, and, and again, the, that benefit in the interest of the public doesn't need to be associated purely with environmental um, improvements. The project is also going to provide much needed housing in Easton, smaller housing that meets um, the demands for people who are looking to downsize but still want to own their own homes and for people like first time home buyers, maybe young professionals. Um, and the mitigation measures that Rick talked about. So all that needed to be taken into consideration as this project was being reviewed by the Conservation Commission. Um, I mean, uh, again, overall, there were still some, some small items I thought that the applicant should address, but nothing that's overwhelming. Um, one of the key points also is that 
41% or approximately 41% of the site will be protected, permanently protected open space. Um, that is substantially more than is required in a flexible development. This is being developed under the compact neighborhood overlay development, which doesn't have an open space requirement, but um, that, that's a substantial amount of land that's being permanently preserved. Um, and I think that's it, unless you want to go into any more detail or if anyone has any questions on any of my comments in my report. Great, thank you. Um, okay, board members, um, questions or comments? Um, you want me to go in order or you just want to sing out? Or? Could we zoom in on the entrance way that we talked about quickly that we didn't get to pull up? That squirrel so darn cute. <laughs> oh, and news, man. Is that showing up for you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's, Rick, you mentioned adding both east and west, not north and south. Gotcha. Never mind. Right. And the lane coming in and the lane going out. Right. Unfortunately, this is an on site civil plan. I, uh, I don't think Megan has the other plan. So I have a traffic engineer that's been working with DPW, and that's essentially complete that's much more detailed you know with the turn lanes and everything but unfortunately i don't i don't think we have that tonight so yeah if you could bring that i mean i know we obviously don't approve that since it's uh on the state road but if you could bring that just so um the members could see mm -hmm. uh, what is the um the dividing line between the um you know the track on the entrance what's what is that made of uh, is it painted or is it a material uh, this here is Kerbin with a grassed area. You don't have the landscape architectural plan, do you, Megan? Uh, I'm trying to see if I can pull up the traffic right now. That would show better. But I can see if I can get the landscape in as well. well. While she's looking, so on the north side of Foundry Street, you know, when working with the town, it became problematic to widen the road going to the north. I think the town has a little triangle. There's a park right there at Paquanicet that I think is being worked on. So that's why we, when we widened, we went all the way into our property on the south to make this whole thing work. So um, I think it works out great for everybody. Is this plan for, um, based on the proposed layout or the existing? I'm sorry, I didn't oh, know. Is this plan based on the widened yes. layout or existing? A uh, widened. Okay. There you go. Oh, there you go. Want to zoom? Can we zoom in on that? Actually, I can zoom in. There we go. That one's hard to see, Megan. On is there another shot of the? Uh, um, I can't. It's hard to see the turn lanes. Let me see you. But you can see the level of detail. It's it's pretty well done. It might just be the quality of the uh, screen share. Let's see if I can bring it up again. No, that's okay. okay. Megan, can you zoom in a little more? Sure, I can try. Oh, that's pretty good. But Peter, you can see where the, uh, you know, our layout is assuming the, the widening. Okay, or, the Christopher, line. I'm sorry. Yeah, I see that dashed line there. Yeah. And and you can see there's like ramps there. The, is there going to be like a crosswalk? Or is that just? Uh, so, so, sorry, something. No, Megan, I'll let you answer and I, I will probably add to what you say. <laughs> Uh, I, we did provide um, ramps here and accessible uh, walk down to this area, and there is a proposed one on this side, I believe. Uh, we haven't shown a crosswalk here, although I assume that would probably be something that they would want added to this. 
So what I'll add to that is, Peter, if you're not aware, the town is working. So this portion of bound of um, 106 is owned by the town. It's not owned by the state, but we did get um, a pro get the project for traffic management and roadway improvements, including a sidewalk that will probably run along the southern portion of the of Foundry Street, as well as a bicycle lane uh, between the um, Five Corners intersection down to where the road turns into Eastman Street, turns to the south and becomes Eastman Street going west. And so there will be in the future sidewalk and bicycle lanes um, that will service all the properties along that stretch of land. And that's in the very preliminary um, analysis phases and surveys and doing some. Hmm, that's interesting because that only is happening when I'm talking, but I don't have anything else going on. Yeah, it's okay, we can hear. Okay, um, so that's in, in the early design fa phases, very early design phases. You'll be hearing more about that as the design work moves forward. We did seek, again, this is purely informational. We did seek a MassWorks grant for an additional $250,000 to advance the 25% design phase. And it's probably going to be a 10 year project in total. But the lights, just for clarity, the Rick part of your project, you'll be installing uh, the turning, the passing lanes, and the lights, and the and the ramps. Um, right, now. we're we're doing everything depicted on this plan, in, right. including the light, which isn't clear there. But yes, what um what are the sidewalk and curbing materials? I believe the sidewalk within the site um, is a mix of Cape Cod berm and vertical granite, but I believe all the sidewalk outside of the property line is vertical granite. Okay, yeah, I meant within the property, within the uh, property. So the sidewalks will be, are they asphalt? Uh, sidewalks are bituminous concrete. And there's a plan which shows which curbs are granite and which curbs are bituminous? Yes, correct. You can just say like a sheet, whatever, and I'll check it out on my own. Sure. It's um included, it's shown on the two layout sheets. Okay, yeah. I have to click through on a big screen sometimes to look at everything. So. I think, Megan, isn't it uh, granite, like up around the clubhouse and, you know, the entrance and everything, and then it converts to, um, you know, berm? I believe so. And then I think I, over the cross, and I think it is vertical granite as well. Yeah. So space requirements. Did we talk yeah. about where school buses will pick up and drop off? Uh, no children are allowed in the development. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thought I'd get a bigger laugh. Jeez. I guess everybody's on mute. <laughs> Okay, so I guess not. Um, where where are the school bus drop offs and pickups? Maybe I'm on mute. No, I can hear you, but I, I don't. Can hear you. I mean that that is always isn't that determined by? I think that's determined by the the town, right? The school. No. Yeah, honestly, Peter, we haven't. I haven't really chatted with anybody about that. You know, my my guess uh, would be at the clubhouse. You know, right there. Um, right, they're obviously not going to drive around the area. Yeah, they'll just shoot right. the spot right. Yeah, right. So the clubhouse has, I mean, sure. So the clubhouse has a parking area. If and yeah. when, um, you know, those parents that choose to drive to the um, school bus location. <laughs> yeah. Well, you would think. I mean, you would think that the school bus, if a school bus enters the site, then they would they would loop around mm -hmm. uh, the, oh, yeah. the square, if you will, on the right. Uh, you know, on the. Um, they're not yeah. going to do a three. No, I don't turn think it's going to be a big problem. Like we've, said, right. we've had larger discussions on smaller projects about that, so I thought I'd at least ask. Yeah, and there's plenty of sidewalk there at the club. There's a nice detailed but, shot of, of you yeah. know, and if you look in the plans, as we're it calls out all the different curbs, and here's a quick little shot of all the landscaping, you know, because it's pretty extensive. 
uh, this area is slightly different in the proposed uh, as the proposed clubhouse has changed. There's actually, instead of this area, there's a uh, open roofed uh, uh, courtyard now on the side of the clubhouse. But otherwise, this is pretty consistent with what it should be. And I think, and Rick, you told me it's a smaller footprint too, right? I, th I think you said it is. Small. Yeah. Then you can see we planted real heavy along the road. Um, and it's traverse landscape architects. I think the towns use them. So they, they seem to do a pretty good job. And I think there's a lot of variety up there. It should look really nice. So kind of a dumb question, but um, which, which, um, which zoning is this project um, special permit being um, proposed under? Compact neighborhood overlay district. Mm -hmm. Okay, compact. Um, board members, any more questions or comments before I uh, throw it to the audience? I'm wondering if you could point out um, the grading, the area of the grading where there maybe would be a retaining wall as deep as 10 feet. I can't see if I can pull that up for you. Chris, it looks like you are participating in this meeting from an area under construction which may not have may may not yet have an occupancy permit. Does that make this legal? This meeting legal? <laughs> I think I see. Is that strapping? I see blurred on the left. <laughs> so most of the area that's going to be basically the highest retaining wall is running right along the wetland area and the stream. Uh, basically connect the two sites. Um, I believe grade here is around 100 at existent and the road is at 113. And uh, so it gets more shallow as you can hear, but we're still at about 120 here and existent is around 108. So it's about 112 feet and then it gets shallower as you go further down the road. So there's one, if I could just enter just while you're on the shot, Megan, so at yep. the very top on the uh, western side, of course, you can't see my arrow, uh, retaining wall 23, tops 121.25, and bottoms 106, so that's actually about a 15-foot high wall there, right, or am I not? It is, it's, that's kind of an overall point, I believe, it's this one here, actually, no, it looks like, yeah, so 122 to 116, right, so that is an eight-foot wall there. No, I'm talking, but see up here, the word, the 123, I mean, we're, we're taking wall 23. Oh, right here. 125 and 106, so that's like 15 feet. Right. So, yep. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. That's is that over the bridge? Is that over the wetland area, Megan? Yeah. Yep. This is over the wetland area. This uh, call out is actually the overall retaining wall. So at like this exact point, it's actually more like 106 and 118 here, so it's a little bit less than that, but overall, that's the. Oh, I see. Uh, those, are, those are the extremes. Okay, I got you. Right. Okay. And obviously, there's guardrails on that for the height. And that's right. why the point. Yeah, that's why the point is there. Okay. A lot of guardrail, huh? Just a little yeah. bit on that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Debbie, you're broken up. Zoom out a little bit. Sure. Greg, can I ask Megan a question? Of course. Or she, um, I, so Megan, um, you showed a piece of the landscaping plan that looked like it had a legend. I'm not sure we have that in our files. I couldn't find a legend. So if you could send that to me, um, sure. make sure we have it, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Question was, could you, I know you talked about it in the very beginning, but I, uh, if you could just clarify or repeat, um, there were five images 
and I do remember the history of, of the different renditions of the proposed housing that was going in. The, the mix that you showed, I think there was like an A, B, and C, and then a one and two had the garages. So is it, is it a mix of everything that was shown there? So some would have front load garages and some would not, is that? So you have that, we have, do you have that unit type sheet, Maya? Yeah. So on our layout sheet, uh, we have all of the units labeled. Um, so these all correspond to the ones that we had labeled on the uh, other presentation that we had shown with the uh, elevation plan or the renderings rather of the different units. And those I believe have all been uploaded to the permitized. Uh, without going back to that presentation image, is there a mix of some that have, like, so for instance, it looks like what, like B2 on the southern western portion looks like uh, that has like a garage in the rear. Uh, but it, I guess that would maybe show up as a front load garage in an elevation. So but I then believe... some of them didn't have any garage shown at all. So are there some that don't have garages? So any, uh, all of the units have garages. The ones that appeared in those photos to really have the front garages are any of the ones in here that are level, uh, labeled D1 or D2. Um, the ones that have the garages pushed further back in that picture uh, because of the angle that the houses were at, you don't really notice the garages so much because they're just set backwards a bit. So the garages for those would be back here. I think at one point this might have also been when we had the garages kind of set to enter sideways, but it was uh, deemed more space efficient to kind of have them off to the side. Um, so they would be kind of in this area right above the driveways. Determine the mix of which would have garages up close to the street and like how many of them versus how many are more like A, B, and C. Uh, so on the side, for example, we have um, 11 of the units on the side have the uh, front, um, which I believe we have 22 on the side, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, we have 28 on the side, so 11 out of the 28 would have the front uh, garage pushed up. And then the opposite side, we have six, it appears, on the side. So six out of 19 on the side. Um, so 17 out of... Oops, sorry. Okay. Did you say? I'm sorry, you cut out a little bit. Yeah, out of the count, you just you were just about to say it. I was gonna say I believe in total it's 17 out of the total 44 units on the site. We um are those front pushed up garages. And um, I think we also talked about this at one point, but, and I think I can see it, but are there sidewalks? Yep, the sidewalk on this side of the site runs from here, down this way, crosswalk here, runs on this side of the street, as well as down this way to the parking area for the trail system. Sidewalk on one side of the street. Straight on the, uh, that would be the south east, sorry, southwest side of the street of Greenbrier Lane. And on the east south side of Surrey Lane.
You all set, Deb? Thank you. Great. Okay, so board, anybody else before I throw this uh, to the audience? All right, so first up, I saw Dale Carister's hand. So Stephanie, if you could. Hey, uh, hold on. Call him in. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi, Dale Carister, 21 South Street. First, I just wanted to thank Rick again for the presentation that Rick and his attorney Walter did several years back to about 50 or 60 members of the Furnace Village neighborhood group uh, in which he did a presentation, answered questions, addressed concerns. Um, folks were very appreciative of that. And I am thrilled to see the extent of the land that's going to be donated to the town as open space and the parking area. Um, those were issues that folks had raised at that meeting. Um, among other priorities, folks are, are really looking forward to welcoming this as part of our neighborhood, and that's a huge part of it. I would ask only of the applicant and the board that the documentation be handled in a way that just preserves that public right of access. Um, secondly, having taken my uh, new golden retriever out for a walk on the other side of South Street a few times in the past week or two, I bumped into a few of my neighbors and friends on the other side of South Street, and I suspect they may have their hands raised too but they would probably appreciate if Rick or Megan could speak to the following th three issues. One, um, what if any screening or buffering plantings will there be provided between the homes that are on, you know, kind of running up towards those properties that are about mm -hmm. South Street? Uh, number two, um, how have any drainage issues being addressed? And number three, just to address any light issues in terms of the lighting studies and so forth. Uh, but anyway, folks are very much thrilled that this uh, project will be uh, hopefully up and running soon. It's going to be a huge improvement to the area and really establish that residential footprint in the area. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Dale. Um, so um, Megan, you want to address uh, those three questions, if you don't mind, or Rick and or Rick? Sure. Can you, can you find the landscape plan, Megan, for the South Street side, the east side? Um, I can see if I can pull that up. The lighting plan while she is looking for that, the light, I'll take the last one first. <laughs> um, there is a detailed photometric plan, um, you know, which just shows the, the you know, the light um, impact on site and uh, Conservation Commission uh, weighed in on that and, and actually um, are sensitive to, uh, you know, everybody sees the, I'll call it the, the daylight they call it light, which is way too bright. Um, we agreed with that. So I think we're doing what they call 3000 K lights out there, which is what they call a soft white that everybody's used to. And the, um, you know, the light posts are shielded. So uh, the lighting has been um, reviewed quite a bit. Um, so I, I, I think that's, uh, and it's not that extensive out there. Um, so I would think that um, there's not any impact on the on the South Street side. Yeah, and they're dark sky compliant fixtures also, I noticed. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then buffering. Oh, that's right. You're looking for the landscape plan. Gotcha. Okay. So for the units that are closest to the South Street units, um, we do have some plantings proposed here. I believe currently we're showing the tree line here to be preserved, uh, as well as the trees north of this. There's actually a wetland here, so this area isn't going to be touched and those trees will be preserved as well. Um, and then south of this area is conservation land, so of course not touching that. Hey, I'm gonna, Megan, thank you. I'm gonna interject for a second here. Um, you know, it's been so long <laughs> since we've seen this project. Um, and I'm just wondering if the board wants to do, um, does, do we feel the need for the site walk? I know we've been out, some of us have been out many times through the years. So I'm not gonna lie and pretend that I know uh, who from this board has been out there. And if, if you think there's any need, we can certainly do that before the, I'm assuming they're gonna come back in a couple of weeks, but. 
And I, and and we've seen that the, the the existing conditions of the main uh, portion of the where the foundry was is a giant pile of gravel. So I, we wouldn't be I wouldn't ask them to lay out the road or anything. I mean, this is small enough. It's good, the development's confined enough that we could see where it was going. But I just was wondering if anybody felt the need was there for that. Um, so something to think about. We can circle back on that later. Um, did we? All right. So we got we answered the light. We answered the uh, and screening, um, and, and then headlight. Oh no, what was what was the other one? The issue was drainage. Oh, drain. Oh, thanks. Now, yep. Uh, so currently for the site, uh, we have all of the stormwater from the site drain in to infiltration basins and chambers on site. Um, those will account for up to a hundred year storm. So anything up to that will be fully kept on site and infiltrated or otherwise routed to the wetlands. And our runoff values are less than in the existence. So actually less water is running off site than in the uh, current state of the site. Thank and you very much. And the drainage, um, just for the folks at home, I know sometimes they'll hear us talk about peer review and all sort of happened concurrently during the whole conservation commission process mm -hmm. so um that's been certainly that has been well reviewed the last uh, 30 months 32 months um okay next up i see uh thank you dale for your questions i see uh, Mar maria wilson um if you could and while stephanie calls her up i there was one i forgot i have to read there was one question submitted um and why can't I find? But it asked if there was going to be just turning lanes or if there would be a traffic light um, at uh, 106 at the entrance. And I said, no, it's both uh, not turning, passing, both passing lanes and um, the street light. And the question was from Andy. So I, I answered that during the last portion of the program. Um, all right, Maria Wilson, um, feel free, name and address for the record, and the floor is yours. Uh, Maria Wilson, 16 South Street. Um, I just have a couple of questions. My first question is, is when is this expected to start and how long will it take? I guess that's a question for me. Um, hopefully within the next month and a half, you know, maybe start clearing some trees, erosion control and a lot of the wetland replication stuff. Um, the market's changed a little bit, so I, I'll hazard a guess at probably three to four years, you know, start to finish. That's for Saturday work. Um, and do you plan on working Saturdays? Uh, I'm sure there will be some work on Saturdays, yes. Okay, um, and my other question is, um, will the street, um, the traffic light go up hand in hand with the development, with the houses being sold, so that will that be going on at the same time as the development is being built? That's the plan, because uh, I don't think anybody, including the town, you know, wants to see cars jumping out out there. I don't. Um, the tra I I have a bid on the traffic light. I don't think there's much delay there. Uh, honestly, we're at probably 95% with DPW because this has taken so long. I think it just kind of got, it gathered a little dust. Um, so I, I'll get with DPW because uh, they, they certainly don't want me to do it this year. Uh, but we probably won't start selling a house until late spring, you know, in, in, and we should have the light up. Excellent. Um, and just one more comment. I just want to say what has nothing to do with what you're doing there, but the houses that you're um, building on Boundary Street are just perfect. And I'm really happy with the way they look and the work that you've done at 555 um, Boundary Street as well. So thank you so much for improving uh, 106. I appreciate that. 555 turned out to be a little bit more than I bargained for, but <laughs> it'll be, well, it'll I, be nice when it's done. <laughs> well, it's, I, I really would like to see it. I, I drive by every day and I'm, I'm like, first, there, you know, you did it all. And then next thing you know, you're going backwards again in the garage. I said, I just want to move into the garage. It's, the garage is amazing. So it looks great. And uh, thank you for that. 
Thanks. Well, thank you for that comment, Maria. I think that's really important. Recently, I was coming under fire as the chair of this committee online, and I was defending our, you know, as we all know, we all worked, including Stephanie, very hard on the bylaws for this area, and it was overwhelmingly approved uh, at, a, at, a, at two or three town meetings, as I recall, um, because that's what it was about, you know, helping revive this area and, and build some property value. And, and, and Rick, as we all know, Rick worked uh, diligently with us to, to put detail, to restore, brought back a lot of detail into that house 555, five, five, which is the one on the corner of the Quantigate and, uh, and Foundry, and, and then the two houses that are going up. And so it's nice to, it's nice to hear, um, hear that all our hard work uh, pays off um, to help, you know, revitalize a historic area. Um, so, um, all right, so let's see, I, I, a couple more. So, all right, so Andy, sorry, there's no last name. He said, will the, okay. So first ask me, will there be a traffic light or a street light? And I said, it's gonna be a traffic light. Uh, this is obviously out on, on, uh, on 106. Uh, next, uh, will there be a traffic light at the entranceway or just turn? Oh, no, I already answered that. So oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. Two more. Uh, all right. Question from George Allen. Good evening. I am a direct abutter to lots one, three, five, and seven on Coach Road. The legend states snow storage areas. Can you elaborate? And what is the buffer going to be? Whether retaining walls or landscaping. Can you see that in the plan while you respond, please? Yeah. So I believe uh, he is the buffer here, and he's talking about these lots here. There's actually drainage here in this area and drainage in this area, so these areas will be grassed. Uh, we do show sto snow storage here inside the um, cul-de-sac for um, emergency snow storage, which I believe is on a separate plan, but this is one that has the units shown. Actually, so we do show a little bit of snow storage here and then in the center of the cul-de-sac. And just to elaborate, uh, so they can, so so snow storage literally is just where snow, um, when necessary, will be stockpiled. Correct. Correct. And then it'll just melt away. Um, okay. Uh, the legend states. Can you elaborate on this? And the what is the buffer going to be? So, yeah. So this is going that you said that's all drainage to the. Uh, is that is that a property line? Uh, there's a property line here. Right. So this area drains and the structure to the uh, two four bays here, which lead to a basin here. Right. So it's safe to say that the buffer between in the area he's at re um, requesting info about is, is pretty much the existing tree line on the property line. Right. Okay. Which anybody familiar with the existing conditions out there? Is it? I mean, it's pretty, those are pretty deep lots, right, on coach? Um, I believe so. I believe that this area currently is wooded, uh, but we are- Yeah, my recollection, that goes pretty far back to Highland, right? So, of course, so then what is the drainage area, you know, outside the radius of the cul-de-sac against the property line? Is that grass? Uh, yeah. That's grass. That's grass said. that slopes towards the, the four bays to the, to the west? Yes. Okay. This year. So, so there's a potential for um, screening in that grass area or not? Um, they, this potential probably to leave some trees right along the property line. They do have to get into this area to grade. Mm -hmm. So the trees there would kind of depend on uh, where the root structure is and where the trees are specifically located. Mm -hmm. No, right, so you're saying there's basically almost almost no screening on on, on your property at that in that area. Are there right. any possibly trees along that property line that may or may not be on your property? Uh, for trees on the lot, there um, 
I can double check on the landscape plan. We might have some of this area planted with trees. Do you have an aerial, um, Megan, or no? Um, I can pull one up on the cover. I don't know if this will be clear enough. Yeah. That might be a little too fuzzy over the screen share. There is a tree line running over here, kind of around the edges. The barren area here, I believe, is where the uh, septic system was. Uh, and you're probably right in, you're probably that little white house there on the, on the bottom right is probably maybe the area that way is of concern because otherwise there's like a, a river there, right? Like a wetland. Uh, the wetland is basically starts right around here, I believe. Yeah, so it looks like there's a house a little bit to the right of here. Right, yeah. right there. Mm -hmm. Right here. So that's the more, yeah, so that's the corner that's really, I would guess is of more concern as far as like some screening goes. Mm. So it looks like there's like a sand pit there right now or something, I can't tell. Or just a dirt, a dirt section, like the whole, like half the property, right? So yeah. Well, maybe we can see that in the site walk. Yeah, I was gonna say that's something we can take a peek at on the site walk, Google Maps. Um, all right, um, next question uh, from Denise Higgins. I cannot join in voice, but my question is, when Target Plaza was developed, we were told that the quiet time would be observed. It never was, and having to call the DPW gets old. Can we get a bit more assurance, please? Greg, could I respond to that? Yes, you may. Okay, so the calls shouldn't go to DPW. They should either go to the zoning enforcement officer or the planning department. And we will have a direct conversation with Mr. Lincoln if they're operating outside of the allowed hours. And would you like to elaborate on the allowed hours? The allowed, um, so I'm not really good at quoting this. It is, I believe the hours of operation are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, but you know what, I'll, I'm gonna look it up in the code book to have it exact. And um, so that's Monday through Saturday and no hours of operation on Sunday. Uh, and then, so I looked that up, so she, Denise says, uh, the construction people were not the offenders. Delivery was the culprit and trash. Um, it doesn't matter who is not right. um, complying. Mr. Right. Lincoln will hear about it if we are notified and, and made aware of the problem. Uh, and then, and sorry if I answered, but what is lot E and the purpose? Uh, oh, lot E is actually the layout plan. So lot E, we have the clubhouse. Um, with the new architect, we'll have the uh, sorry courthouse uh, courtyard rather uh, built in here, and then this here is actually a drainage basin. Oh, so that whole lot will be owned by the association. Correct. Sure. Uh, Greg, I have yep. hours of operation. Uh, let's see. Loading, unloading, opening or closing, making loud noises, 8 p.m. The um, is disallowed between the hours of 8 p.m. and 7 a.m. And other drilling operation of ma machinery is between 8 p.m. and 7 a.m. Monday through Saturday. So it's... Um, disallowed between 8 p.m. and 7 a.m. and no operation on Sundays. Yeah, and in my experience during the winter, you know, we don't have much of an issue. You know, it's it's kind of policing the subcontractors because it's dark, so early. you know, it's right. the summertime that you've got to get after them and tell them to stop sometimes, so. 
All right. Well, thank you, uh, Denise, for your questions. Um, so, uh, board members, anything else uh, to add before we vote to continue? So, Stephanie, Rick, and your team, Megan, anything? I think I'm good. Well, the last question is um, the the walkways going from you know to each unit, like you know, on the pictures. Oops, sorry. The pictures show like a walkway. Are those walkways? on most most of the uh, homes and what's the material i tend to do pavers you know those are these are real small walkway you mean from the driveway to the front door that type of thing so they're not bituminous they're not asphalt i mean typically not but i have done asphalt but not in so maybe a number on this of years project, they would be pavers or concrete uh, they would definitely not be concrete. So I'll, I'll say okay. asphalt so maybe or be pavers. pavers and not asphalt. I, I was going to think they're probably pavers because of concom, right? Because you were looking so hard to reduce. Well, they're well, both. I'm just saying, you know, since we, there's an aesthetic back with this whole project, right? And, you know, it make it, make it look nice. And if we have asphalt sidewalks running to asphalt walkways, it just doesn't look, you know, it's not, it's a different kind of different look in my opinion from that. A designer per se, but um, yeah. Do you mean the sidewalks or no, he's talking walk? from the sidewalk to the house, like a front walk or from your driveway yeah, to the front walk? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, uh, I that's probably some uh liberty that the uh my architect took. I we don't have any sidewalk, uh, we don't have any walkways, do we, Megan? They go like that. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying that this. The, that the sidewalks should or need to be concrete. But I, I was asking about the walkways from the sidewalk to the units. We currently don't show walkways. If, uh, if I, we were to do walkways, I believe, as we're saying, they'd be pavers rather than asphalt or concrete. Okay. And it would, it, and it's typically, Peter, from the driveway to the front door. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think All that right. would run. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I figured that those renderings were not, yeah, that's good. Right, yeah. Um, it's, so, um, so I guess uh, so. This is a good a good recap. I think we we still have a couple of big projects to look at. So I'm going to wind it up here. Um, I think that um, you know at our next meeting we could probably yeah, get into because you know he, Rick has the architectural models that we all kind of gave a thumbs up to you know but you know preliminarily a, a ways back and he has some. He had some really great ideas on the uh, the clubhouse, and you know, thinking back, we, 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 he talked about the the limited uh, we cap the size of the units, the number of bedrooms. We get the architectural approval, um, and so the so sort of like Peter's question: any any final little details? You know, because we can always put that in the decision. You know, any walkways would be you know uh, pavers, etc. So just uh, you know, take take a, a, a we looked at sort of structurally. Uh, schematically at these plans in terms of the details and just you know uh, dive in a little deeper if you can and so are we uh entertaining a site walk in the next couple of weeks folks sure is there enough interest i mean i would go peter would go anybody else i know it's a busy time for everyone so. I'd, I'd go i haven't been before okay um so while we're all here well, is it, and we always we tend to like what, eight a.m. mornings. Is that what we do? Mm -hmm. Um. So, and I, I throw this out to Rick and to the board members. How you want to do a day next week? Because when's our Stephanie? When's our next meeting? Uh, let's see. Um, good goodness. Uh, and let's see. The twelfth. It will be. I should have it in my calendar. September nineteenth. The nineteenth. Nineteenth. Yep. And yeah, so if we did something next week, um, then because it would be out here the following uh, Monday. Um, Let's have um, what if um, Robert chooses more limited in the morning? So what if he, what if he chooses a day and then we can all look at our calendars tomorrow in the morning if we only have them in front of us right now and we'll decide? I could do Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday next week. Deb, usually the next. I can do Tuesday or Friday. So that's opposite yep. of what. Yep. <laughs> I can do any day in the morning. Um, yeah, with sufficient time, I can. Greg, do you want us to send out an email tomorrow? Yeah, I was going to say, well, we'll do this in the morning. That way we don't have to take And Rick, I'm assuming you, can, you or your team can make 
this, you know, yourselves available so you can walk us around? Yeah, we actually have an erosion control line on that east side. We've completely staked out, so you can really get a good sense. Cool. Okay, so uh, we'll send great. an email out tomorrow morning. Okay, so uh, can I get a motion to continue to our next hearing? Motion to continue Sawmill Village to the next hearing, Stetson. Anderson, second. All those in favor, Greg Strange, aye. Robert Stetson? Aye. Peter Deshane? Aye. Deborah Balseric? Aye. Christopher Anderson? Aye. Shrebian? All right. Thank you, Thanks. Megan. Thank you, Rick. Have a good night. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Rick, everybody. Before you move on, yeah. um, would you have the board vote to continue 530? Yeah, that was that's what I was going to do next. Yeah. I, I rolled over there. So we just need a vote to continue. Uh, site plan review for 534 Washington Street uh, till September 19th. Motion to continue 534 Washington Street to September 19th. Stetson. Anderson, second. Any further discussion? Just that that's my brother's keeper. All uh, those in favor? Greg Strange, aye. Robert Stetson? Aye. Deborah Balseric? Aye. Christopher Anderson? Aye. Peter Deshane? Aye. I got everybody right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, all right. Continued site plan review. Um, this actually, uh, this is four sixty four and four sixty six boundary. So this is this is a, this is a can, this is a special. I mean, uh, public hearing, right? The site plan it doesn't matter if it's this, but continued public hearing it, for. Yes, uh, it is a it is a special. Oh, that's right. Oh, so Permit. now, so is this, we have to re, so We've remember got, they refile. Yeah. So the next meeting to, at the next meeting. Yes. It opens on meeting. the 19th. Mm -hmm. Okay. The special the current part. Okay. Yeah. So we can have a, um, so you can go through this? kind of, this is really for the applicant to uh, present a revised concept plan and then at the next meeting we'll formally open okay so this is like a preliminary presentation yes right yes. okay so so what we're babbling on about um is when these gentlemen came in uh the first time they had filed if remember we, they had filed for a uh, mixed use project uh, right. and then now they're coming back with a a, a multi-family uh, so um, Stephanie realized that they needed to sort of uh, refile and we had to post a public notice, all that. So that'll be at the next meeting. So tonight is just kind of an informal uh, discussion of their new concept. Um, so I will turn, Scott, are you running this or who's? Yes, sir. If I, I can so just uh, name and address for the record and the floor is yours and hopefully you'll be sharing a screen. I, I'm hoping, uh, hoping so as well. Uh, good evening, folks. Scott Faria, Holmgren Engineering. Uh, along with me tonight is Dave Stevett from BKA Architects and the owner, developer, Joe Grimaldi. And uh, after our last meeting with you folks and our site visit, uh, the biggest uh, concern that we, that we heard was uh, the hope that we could have more green space behind the building. Uh, so when we're on a site visit, we, you know, we kicked around a couple of things. Uh, the main, I think the main thing we talked about was potentially adding a third story, which would shrink the footprint and give us some more green space. Uh, once we looked into that, we realized that adding the third story uh, with the, um, the structural components, the elevator, things like that, that would be uh, necessitated by that third story really made the the project uh, just made the numbers not work. So what we looked at was uh, kind of laying out the packing a little bit different than what we uh, had shown previously. So if I may share the screen, I'm going to attempt. Does anybody see that? Yes, we see it. All right, thank you, thank you. All right, so what we did, uh, where my cursor is, uh, we still have a sidewalk proposed from the back of the building to the parking area. Previously, we had a parking area uh, right here between the sidewalk 
in the proposed site. We eliminated that parking area, put it in this uh, the side parking row that we already had proposed. We now still have the same number of spaces, but we increased uh, the green space by about 6,000 square feet. I think more than the more than the amount of square footage that we increased, we just kind of opened things up and made that whole space uh, a little more usable. So, uh, so what we're really hoping for tonight was just to discuss this with you. I just want to go over this rendering, uh, showing the new parking in the new green layout with you folks. And Dave Siebert can talk in uh, much greater detail about architectural features of the building uh, like we touched on briefly at our last public hearing. Uh, so those are really the two main, main things we're hoping to, to get some input from the board, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Was anybody else getting that really strange echoing was, reverberation? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was annoying. <laughs> um, okay. So... So yeah, I, I see. Um, I see. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so uh, boards, board members, um, thoughts. You know, I, I guess. You know, Scott was showing how right they you know they moved that parking out of there. I guess. You know, the question that I have, and the whole history of this thing, as I mentioned a couple of times, was the thought was trying to create some more green space. So Scott, what is the, you have like the army green, green space. What is that? Thank you. Uh, so the army green uh, is the existing tree line, which obviously we're not working into that at all. So that's army green is the existing tree line. Uh, then we have the 50 foot no touch buffer zone right in this area here that is orange and then it kind of fades into the green a little bit. So then we have the 50 foot no touch that we can't uh, work in uh, to mitigate uh, some work that had been done in the past by the previous homeowner. They did some clearing in this area within the 50 foot buffer zone. In addition to some plantings, we're proposing this DACA green area, Mr. Chairman, that will uh, that will be allowed to, to kind of revegetate. It'll be a meadow mix uh, of seed and we'll have signs up in that area not to uh, not to mow that area. So it'll kind of act as a, we're hoping as a, as a pollinating area. Uh, and then in addition to that, we would have our walking trail uh, go from the, the little turnaround in front of the building through the green space, through the woods and uh, eventually back out to our fire pit. So a little bit of a, of a, uh, a walking trail for the for the residents to get around the property, get through the woods, uh, and then get back onto the sidewalk. So my only question is that kind of where your white arrow is down the bottom there. Yes. If mem memory serves, there's only, there are only a couple. I mean, there might be just a couple tall, almost pine trees or whatever that that yes. were left. Yes. So, I mean, I don't think does that. I mean, how did you? That looks that dark area seems much. Um, it's the, the canopy seems much bigger than it really is. Yeah, that that is the canopy. I think the the tree line the tree line isn't exactly the the property line, Mr. Chairman, which you know is a little bit, I guess, deceiving. So, so the condos. Well, but I guess my point is this: like that, you show roughly the scale where your arrow is. So that front to back, that looks like it's you know four, fifty feet of yeah of green. Okay. Is there really fifty feet of canopy there? There is. Hmm, okay. Well, oh, right. The property line is almost like a step. It's a lighter line, right? It's not right. Right down here is the. Yeah, property. I guess. Yeah, oh, I just didn't okay. think there were that many trees there. But anyways, I mean that that's fine. Because I mean, the, my I guess my point is, like, like where is is the bottom of that green area? Is that the property line? No, no, no. no the the property, property line is what I think. That little property line right there. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yep. see that faint line. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Um, I can zoom up. The fan line bisects that little nub of Greenwood Village Street. Right. right. There it is right there, a little bit better. So that's the property line. And then going up uh, up the lot line this way. But I think that 
So if, you know, thinking back when we started to talk about this um, and knowing, you know, one of the one of the thoughts I was hoping to to do, remember we talked about maybe, you know, cutting off um, some of this land, this park area or the, you know, the, and the, the, uh, the, the, the wetlands area. Yep. Um, so that we could include this property in the, the MBTA required zoning, you know, to get the density that we need. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something we'll have to figure, figure out. I mean, if the, if this project goes forward and I know to Scott, or Stephanie, do you know, um, I guess one of my concerns is we, we come in and we, let's say we were to approve sort of a concept and thinking that, oh, I have all this open lawn area in the, you know, the 100 foot buffer, 100 to the 50 foot buffer. And then CONCOM during their review, um, I mean, is there precedent? Like, how, how do you, how do you think this will be handled? Will they be allowed to have a, a, a recreation area, a park area in, in between the 50 and 100 foot buffer? Well, my understanding is that uh, that area is already disturbed. They're proposing restoration. And so the the short answer is yes, this this can be approved. They're not the only um, they're introducing new impervious surface in the outer 50 feet buffer right. zone from the mm -hmm. which um, they would be in roof infiltrating, right? Scott? Correct. Yes. Roof runoff infiltration. So yes, this this could, this is a permittable project, and I would see see some actual improvements based on the amount of landscaping um, and the pollinating area. The only my, my only thought on the pollinating, and I would let Jen weigh in on this, is you mentioned planting it with a seed mix and mm -hmm. um, you know a wildflower and grass seed mix. If in order to keep that as a, um, a grassland that will be utilized by pollinators, it would need to be mowed once a year um, at, at the end of the growing season to keep the woody vegetation down, so. Good, thank you. So I think at some point, um, before we get too far on this, we need to figure out uh, how, and I'll, I'll toss this to you, Stephanie, but we need to figure out a process by which we can get an indication from CONCOM that what we are agreeing to in concept can be done. What I don't want to do is pretty much approve something or get close to approving something. And then, you know, it's based on having this, this you know, all this green space that can be used. And then we find out it can't. Right. So that we know that's happened in the past and that's not, you know, so I just, I could just say move it out of that hundred and move it closer to the road. Well, I'm not saying move. I'm just saying if I understand, you know, no, it's already, it's a, it's a, an existing disturbed site. There were two buildings on it originally. I'm just saying, um, I, I see this concept and I see lots of access inside between the 50 and hundred foot buffer, which I'm all in favor of, but I want, I don't, what I don't want to do is approve this Understood. and then send it to CONCOM and then find out we can't do it. Cause then, you know, we're going to be caught because we're like, Oh, well, boy, they're, they're already right. spent all this money in this time. So I want to find out early on yep. um, what can be, so however we do do that, we just have to figure out how, because I need, have, need that assurance. So, so we have a filing before them right now, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, so we're, we're kind of going through you folks and the Conservation Commission at the same time. Uh, we're going through the peer review process with beta right now on behalf of both you folks and the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a, uh, a public hearing schedule for their next meeting. I forget if it's this coming Monday, I forget the exact date, but their next meeting is our first public hearing with uh, with them to discuss the project. So I would I would assume that, uh, again, if Monday night's the correct night, I would assume that, you know, Monday night, I'm certain we're not going to get approved, but if we're going to get shut down, I would say we'd have a pretty good feeling of it Monday night, Mr. Chairman. Okay, great. Um. Okay, so did you want to, um, so that's the site. Did you want to have uh, um, your architect show the building or how, what do you want I to would do? like to have Dave Siebert talk to you folks about the uh, the elevations in the, the building that he's designed. I'm gonna stop sharing. And uh, I guess with your permission, invite Dave to start talking, Mr. Chairman. Sure, absolutely. All right, this is Dave Siebert from BK Architects. And? Welcome. Thank you. 
right? I have a uh, plan up. So the overall site plan, uh, slightly varying paths or um, trails that were on Scott's plan, but overall and in general, it's a carbon copy in color, um, minus, minus the uh, army green. But uh, at any rate, uh, you can clearly see the uh, tree line is discussed along that property line. These are some taller trees that you were pointing out earlier. And I sort of contain them within this site uh, as opposed to showing the um, tree line bleeding out. But conceptually, um, we we're looking at sort of an evolving farmhouse motif, sort of an organic growth of uh, its expansion. And in floor plan, there would have been in, the, in this uh, sort of parti a, a main house, uh, a couple of additions to that, and then a um, exterior um, detached barn structure across um, a streetscape. So we, uh, we were trying to accent accentuate the walkability of that street and the, the length of it as well and that would um, help capture a quiet green space in the back. So this is a first floor level where you'd have a main entry lobby, which serves as sort of a main entry uh, in feel off of the cul-de-sac and drop off and then uh, linked units to get to a barn structure. So these are sort of stackable levels, a first and a second, with similar units on, on top of one another, totaling 20 units, um, most of which are two beds. And in three dimensions, I have to switch here. I think I do. Okay, one second. That's not working. Can you see that? Yeah, we can see the pictures. You can oh, see the, okay. Yeah, I can see the elevations. You never quite know. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, from Foundish Street, uh, in elevation at least, you, you can see where we were sort of depicting a an original farmhouse structure that would have had uh, a couple of additions to it and then a, a link between that and a um, barn element. And along the side where the parking um, spaces occur on that main drive, there would have been drop off. We're showing a stone facade here, which would have delineated that original structure and then and uh, additions along the back, which you can see. Along this facade, this is facing the green space. Each unit would have an individual um, balcony exterior. And in three dimensions along the street, Boundary, come on, there we go. Here's a, a view from the entry, entry drive. You can see that um, stone and sort of in structure that would serve as the main entrance. And then it uh, extends towards a, uh, a main element at the opposite end, which would have been a larger barn structure. So it's a nice bookend of two schemes. Um, in the rear, this is a previous rendering where we had a, a single loaded parking lot, which has now been transformed into the green space that you saw in plan. But the uh, architecture stays the same. So you have just a simple path running from the exterior rear entrance to the uh, parking lane. 
It's another view from a green area. Looking back towards that, there's a lower level entrance and then units across the back as well. Um, so we, uh, we're obviously trying to incorporate uh, a masonry material, looking at stone, and then um, a, so it would all be fired with cement material. So it's uh, a sustainable approach, but we uh, want to emulate a, uh, a subtle wood feel with some uh, industrialized elements, but slim and sort of sleek in, a, in detail where they wouldn't visually take up too much room uh, as balcony forms. So I can feel a question or two on, on that, but I know that the uh, pictures speak for themselves quite often. The um, condensing units for those interested would occur on the roof and that um, is a flat section. So it's screened from view from uh, Foundry Street and the rear. All right. Um, thank you, Dave. Um, board members, uh, questions or comments for you know any of the site, the, the buildings, anything? Um, again, this is just a, a preliminary reintroduction, so it's not like you have to get everything tonight, but you know, if you have any thoughts or questions. No, it makes me feel better about it. You know, it seems like it's something that's probably uh probably worth 20 units uh, that will look good and be situated well. So thank you. So that's one vote to deny. No, just kidding. <laughs> Not supposed to joke like that, am I? Forgive me. I'm just a little levity. Um, that's you know, I mean, site wise, I already kind of said my concerns, and I, you know, the walking path. I think we can increase the landscaping around mm -hmm. that, um, especially out front. But we'll worry about that another day. Um, and then, and the building, Dave. I, you know, I appreciate uh, your efforts on this, and I, I see and. Um, I think, um, you know, I, um, it's nice, uh, these, this, this rendition was some of the renderings I've seen for the first time, some new renderings and, you know, I like how it addresses the street. I'm still a little concerned with that sort of that repetition area in the middle, but, you know, we'll, we'll let it, we'll let it, uh, we'll let it bake, you know, I, I think we should focus probably a little more. Get everything set with with the site, but you know the use of color and all. It's it's on its way. You know I, I, what I try to tell people is give us something that only Easton has, and um, you know a nicely detailed multifamily um, project that can add to the property value. Um, so I think the, the potential is here for that. I appreciate your efforts. Um, and uh, so anybody on the board before I go to the audience? I know it's been a long night for all. A question. The uh, the side street I, is a Greenwood Village Avenue, or I don't recall what it what it is exactly. Um, that's a private road, right? Yes, it is. Okay, so that's why that uh, parking lot cannot be connected uh, back into it. Okay. Correct. That does it for me. <laughs> thank you, thank you for the uh, yeah the the continued efforts to update the elevations and so forth. Um, okay, anybody else on the board? Before I see, we have one question in the audience. So before I do that, all right. So um, Stephanie Dale Carrister, he's new in town, I think, but he's uh, has his hand up. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, Dale Carrister, 21 South Street. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I had understood that the rezoning for this area that was recently done conditioned residential density for a project like this on a parcel like that, on it being mixed use and meeting whatever those requirements were. The original plans provided for a restaurant and some other retail space there. Uh, I, 
based on what I reviewed today, it doesn't look like there's any mixed use components to it anymore. No restaurant space, no ice cream shop, no uh, retail space. And speaking for myself, who spoke in favor of the those zoning changes at that town meeting, I think that was a key component for a lot of folks to vote in favor of the additional residential density on those particular areas. Um, so I'm wondering if, if it's something that the board could would give serious consideration to, to the extent that they're being asked to approve a project that doesn't provide for a mixed use in accordance with the, the bylaws. Thank you. Okay, so I'll take that one if you guys don't mind, um, or I'll start with it. Um, so first, so Dale, if you look at the bylaw, there is a provision for uh, for mixed use, and um, but there's also a provision for a, a multifamily, um, and it does um, the, it calls out, you know, and you may recall um, when we were writing the bylaws. I know you participated in many of the meetings. It um, the the majority of the board felt um, they wanted to have a an option to provide um, a, additional units. Um, so if you did an analysis of this with a multifamily, I think it's with the lots. If you broke it into you know a series of two or three small lots, you could do fifteen or sixteen units. And of course, you have to do affordable on top of that, which adds to your total. So they'd be somewhere. 16, 17, 18, um, and they're on 20 here. Um, during, when they came in, the, the first uh, rendition they sent, which you may have seen, I think you alluded to it, it was on Yeah, uh, it was a, a mixed use project. They had 28, if I recall, 28 residential units, and then it had a mixed use. Um, but it um, ate up every square inch of, of usable space on this lot. and. I felt, and others did too, we had some discussions and Stephanie, uh, you know, we all sat around and think of some of the things we're charged with in Easton, um, as we being the planning board. And it, not only is it economic development, he's maintained Easton's rural character, you know, things like that. And I always remember how jarring it was when these two lots before um, Mr. Grimaldi owned them had been clear cut. And I always thought, well, there was Greenwood Village, which I, I remember years ago, I had a client that lived in there. And I said, this is kind of aptly named. You go down, whether you come off of Bay Road or off of, uh, off of 106, you know, go down this little road and, you, you know, it's all treed and have these houses. And then I kept thinking, wow, what do those people think now? Because for whatever reason, that, that lot was completely clear cut. And all you saw was a dilapidated, abandoned house in, in the side of Shaw's. Um, and thinking, okay, if we're going to do multi family here or, or, or mixed use. I mean, th this part of town, there's really no park. There's, there's some, you know, there's some open space. Obviously there's, you know, Wheaton Farm and the whole Emerald Necklace, but, you know, for a younger family or even just for kids that, you know, there's no place for people to go and, you know, hang out and play a, play a game of Frisbee, or play or just, you know, read a book. <laughs> and and um, so, and then thinking of, you know, the MBTA zoning that's coming up and, uh, you know, the advantage we could have by maybe controlling units versus having to do it all by right. Um, and, and then thinking of the district, um, this district as a whole, the, the Furnace Village districts uh, and the four sub-districts, uh, including the four sub-districts, there's an awful, currently there's, an, there's a significant amount of abandoned, or I shouldn't say abandoned, a vacant um, commercial space. Now I know we all, we want to maintain our commercial, uh, we, you know, our, our commercial tax base would like to expand it when we can. Um, but as we've, you know, we've talked for years, uh, all the rezoning we've done for the 17 years I've been on this board, we've talked about wanting to create walkable neighborhoods. And so when we think of this district from Shaw's all the way up to, to Target, uh, there's historical, there's, there's commercial, there's residential. And going back to the meeting earlier that you participated in, you know, when the site within 10 years, as Stephanie talked about, you know, part of Rick Lincoln's project gave us the planning, uh, uh, some money to help subsidize the planning of and design of that road to include bike lanes and sidewalks and, you know, maybe trees. And then you think of the historical fence and Swift's Park. So having a little vision as planners need to looking, looking to the future, we're like, okay, this can really be great. And we also have the benefit. This is all mixed. This is all um, special permit. So at some point, so let, let's say this project were to be approved. Okay. Then, um, you know, there's other projects coming to us in town. Well, we may be more, okay, that really needs to be 
a mixed use project, or maybe that needs to be just a, just a commercial project. You know, we, we can try to we we can try to share uh, shape and work collaboratively with the property owners. Uh, what we're not going to do is just on every property go in and say, okay, boom, you can max out on apartments or condos. But um, you know, this is the first one, no, second one, I guess you have to think of 555. But this is one of the first ones out of the gate. And we're like, okay, well, we have a, 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 an applicant that's willing to work with us and, and put a highly detailed, uh, expensive building to build up there and work on a, a park and the landscaping. So it seemed to be a good path to take versus if we went with a mixed use, you know, went in with a whatever, a storefront, a restaurant. And, and realistically, there wasn't much parking for that. And yeah, it works on paper, but does it work in reality? So that's, sorry for such a winded answer, but I think it was an important answer to give. And that, that's kind of how we got um, to, to this point. But I assure you, this this is within the, the planning board's um, purview to, to um, approve this type of project. It doesn't have to be mixed use. But don't think for a minute that we're not going to you know, look to have mixed use or, or just straight commercial but we just kind of deal with the ones that are in front of us at a time. So, <sighs> sorry. And Stephanie, if you have anything you want to add to that, feel free. I know it's late, so forgive me. So I think I put Dale to sleep, so that's good. <laughs> um, uh, anybody else want to add, chime in with anything? see is dale's hand up again or is that never down can anybody why can't i hear you yeah, yes i just i was muted apparently i, I wanted to i'm sorry i'm muted i'm muted Greg. I'm i sorry. thought my sound was off i'm like no i can't hear anybody no. i really did put them all to sleep <laughs> so can, can you hear me craig i can hear you dale yep okay right. this again dale Harris, 21 south street uh just to briefly respond i certainly will take a look at the multi-family portion of the bylaws for that area but i think most folks certainly would have understood that would be you know two or three family uh, homes you know whatever it might be this is something substantially different for the area and having participated in zoning issues for this area since the visioning charrette back in 2017 or 18 a huge component for folks was when you talk about pedestrian friendly meaning also the places to go to an ice cream shop and you know folks are i think are happy about aroma joe's coming in and so forth um, I think there's a real danger that if this project does not include at least some portion that has a retail or restaurant or ice cream shop or something that folks are going to feel, why is there any assurance that this isn't going to be a series of just apartment buildings in that you know, area and not having anything for folks to walk to? So just ask the board to give that serious consideration. Sure. So I would, but and Dale, frankly, we have, and I would, I would say this, first of all, to any folks out there, and I, I'm constantly saying this, come and participate. Because it's one thing, and I'm not, not this isn't pointed at you, Dale, because you, you certainly participate. <laughs> um, but there are people online, oh, we, you know, we have a vision. We have some ideas for this area. We're not perfect by any means, but there is no, I, I live a mile from here, and I bet you, the majority of commercial space in this district is vacant. There, right now, currently, there is no shortage. So, if somebody wants to open a restaurant, if someone, you know, uh, open up a whatever type of commercial, there is ample place for them to do that. Um, so, we're looking at it as okay. We need to add some residences in this neighborhood. People go, oh, there's too much traffic. The traffic's already there. Twenty nine thousand cars a day come off of Route four ninety five, and and cut through to twenty four. So that's that's not because of Easton, or not because we've added 20 units here or three units here. You know, the build out of this district, remember, it really isn't that big. But if we're going to ha truly have a walkable neighborhood and Aroma Joe's, I why part of a it's no it's to me it's no mistake or it's no coincidence I should say that Aroma Joe's that building has been vacant for years, and that has now opened for two reasons. First, because of the the sewer that came down, and I know you're you're uh, keenly aware of that. So you know. And the fact that with this zoning, there are, you know, Stephanie and I on a weekly basis get calls or contacted by a number of people looking at properties in this district. Um, and, there, and we're all told that this is sort of organic. We have a really wide open menu, a slate of different choices people can go with. And I can assure you, or at least as long as I'm involved in this, not every project is gonna be a multifamily project, but first one coming out of the gate, 
this is like this area doesn't look too good right now. That's why I tell people all the time. They say, "Oh, we need more commercial." Look at our commercial. Look at Route 138. Look at one sections in this neighborhood. They are blighted. They are abandoned. In some cases, they are neglected, and they sure as heck are vacant. So we need to pump some some energy into here and some confidence so that people will come in and open up another restaurant, another you know whatever massage shop, a uh, coffee shop, you know, uh, a record store, go retro, a workspace. And having part of that equation is going to be have, having more residents, residences in this area. Um, and you, we've got to keep people, you know, we're, we're aging out as a town. We, you've always got to be bringing in fl fresh blood. People, oh, the schools, the schools, the schools. And, well, first of all, that's, you know, the, the school, you know, on something like this or even on Rick Lincoln's project where it's at 1,700 feet and two bedrooms. You know, there's almost a built-in governor on that. And I'm, you know, but you, you want children to some degree too. But anyways, um, anybody watching this, anybody who's concerned, come in and talk to us. You know, that's why we did this as a special permit because these are, this is so much better than a 40B where the town, you know, where the residents, yeah, you know, sure you have a say, but it's, it's yeah, you, you don't have nearly the say you can in a special permit. But I would just ask your um, faith in this board um, and in the process for we're looking at this district wide, not looking, you know, not saying every property should have mixed use because it's just not realistic when you look at some of the when lot sizes. Um, yeah, and, and to be sure, I am fully grateful for all the work the board has done. And I do have faith in the in what you guys are doing and will be doing on that. It, it's almost more of an issue of uh, more just for the integrity of the process for the town overall. You know, as you know, that there are a lot of folks in town. I'm not one of them. Who are against adding, you know, more residential units? I'm in favor. I'm not against the, the 20 units being added here, um, but more in the nature of um, thinking it should also include at least some retail space. And I would ask also when you're considering the mixed use, look at the difference between what has been and what will be. This area is getting revitalized, and frankly, I think it has the potential to be an extraordinarily vital area in town with new small shops, ice cream shops, work areas, whatever that might open up, as opposed to it having been sort of unattractive before the, the sewer and the zoning changes. So anyway, I've, I've spoken my piece. Thank you, I appreciate it. Great, okay, thank you, Dale. All right, so we're gonna cap it right there. Um, right, anybody on the board or pres presenters or uh, Stephanie, anything to add? No. So uh, we'll continue this to the 19th, I guess. We'll see how you, right? Yes. So we don't really, so we don't, it's already gonna be on the agenda. So we don't need to continue. This is just informal. So we don't need a motion, right? Uh, it, I, it never hurts to vote. Okay. So I'm gonna say, I'd love someone to make a motion to continue. Well, but how are we gonna continue this? Cause then it's gonna be, no, you know, we don't need to because we're opening a new public hearing, right? That's true. Actually, so you're right. I'm just, we're gonna, this is, right. this will just be the end of this informal and we look forward yeah. to opening um, the public hearing on the 19th. Thank you, gentlemen. Great. Thanks for your time. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. All right. All right. We're in the home stretch here, folks. Uh, some Hill potential. All right. So let's quickly, before we get to the, we have the zoning. Want to do um, for Quanticate real quick? Mm -hmm. um, so we're just going to update the board, right? Or did you have a presentation or? Oh, no. I, I mean, not, I, right. In fact, I thought you were going to update the board. Okay, well, so you guys are, all right, so 35-37 for Quanticate Avenue. Remember the duplex that we approved uh, earlier this year? Um, and it was a, if you recall, it was a uh, historic, there's that echo again. It was a historic um, uh, worker housing for one of the foundries. It had been a duplex and then it had stopped being a duplex. So anyways, uh, the party, the applicant came in and presented first the historical and then to us uh, that they were going to preserve the building and they wanted to go back to um, to being uh, a duplex. And so if you look at all the plans that you showed what they were demolishing, what they weren't, they're just doing some interior demolition. And remember we got them out of detail. Well, lo and behold, um, being a resident of Aquanicate, I drove by um, two Fridays ago and the house had been demolished with the exception of the first floor walls. So Stephanie was on uh, vacation at the time. So I, I reached out to the building inspector and then alerted him to that. And, um, and and Tim Hurley, the historical chair had also, we kind of did at the same time he had seen it. Uh, and the stock work order was issued because it certainly violates um, 
violates our special permit um, that we awarded and, and also violates the demo delay bylaw, which is that's more of a historical thing. So that's just where that's at. So I, I they have the stop work order and um, I think um, at some point, I imagine they'll reach out to Stephanie and, uh, you know, I thought is maybe Stephanie and I would just do a quick meeting with them and saying, hey, you know, whoa, here's, you know, here's the issue. And then they have to come in before us and, um, um, you know, to see what, um, you know, what the remedy can be. So, so. And Greg, I do see Amy <coughs> Kingston, the applicant for that project in the audience. <laughs> I'm sorry, Stephanie, I couldn't hear you. I, was... I, I see that Amy Kingston, who was the applicant for that project, is in the audience. Okay. Um, do you want me to? Do we how want do to... we have this listed? Stop work order. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we can have a brief discussion because I, I, uh, I didn't, I don't want to go too long on this. We've yeah. got a few things to get through. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Oops. Yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Trying to find the buttons. Thanks for, um, you know, allowing me to speak tonight. Uh, I had reached out to Suzanne and to uh, Wayne because I didn't really know where the stop work had come from. Frank had uh, told us it, it didn't originate with his group. Um, and uh, so just to let you guys uh uh, be aware, we've run into a lot of rot in the building. Um, so it's been a, a big challenge. We've had our structural engineer out there and our builder. Um, and I was told that this was the forum to have the discussion. Certainly, I would rather have had a discussion at the site or in, in, in person um, with you guys to have those concerns. So uh, happy to pull my engineer in. Uh, we're still trying to assess. There are some issues with the back wall as well um, and uh, in the uh, silk plates. So um, it's probably best for the site visit, uh, but I, 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 don't, I don't really know what your process is um, in terms of, of how to handle that or how we should have handled it. You well, know, this is the first time we've had a, a special permit uh, violated uh, so blatantly. So we don't really, we don't have a process, but I, I think what you should do is um, uh, probably reach out to Stephanie. We can set up a time to get together mm -hmm. okay. um, because what, what the process should have been because the, you know, you, all of your presentations, I even went back and watched the videos just to make sure I wasn't imagining things and, and both the historical and to this board was all about preserving the building and that was i, uh, I didn't actually present to me, the store. Can, you, can you can you please let me well you presented to to mr beitler um and, and anyways to this board because you're right th this is all that matters because this is the this is the permitting body for the special permit um and right in the decision for the special permit it talked about preservation and your plan your, your plans detailed the preservation so um once um, you determined that some existing conditions um, were going to um, not allow the preservation of the building, you, you should have reached out before you, you took it down. Um, and uh, because it was, you know, it's, it's a special permit, it, it, it's not by right. And now, now it's been demolished. Now, now you have a non-conforming lot. I mean, there's a whole bunch of, uh, of issues that have been opened up. And, um, but I think, um, you know, not not really prepared to discuss this tonight, and I actually specifically said I didn't want to discuss this tonight. With um, just just I wanted to alert the board. Uh, but why don't you, in the next few days, um, reach out to uh, to Stephanie, and we can set up a time to meet at her office or, or do a Zoom, and and then you can come into the next uh, or, or you know a future planning board meeting. Don't want to speak to the agenda. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I got an email to attend this meeting tonight. So I apologize if that was not what the intent was. No, that's fine. I just want to, uh, I wanted to, um, to be fair to the board because I, you know, um, other than Mr. Anderson, who, who lives near me, I know he, I had told him about it, but I don't think the other board members knew of it. Um, and, uh, but why don't you, yeah, so let, like I said, so reach out to Stephanie, we can, we can all do a meeting and then take it from there. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Uh, okay, 
um, potential zoning amendment center and depot street. Stephanie? Yes. Um, so the board is probably aware that over the last, I think it's been six months, the town has undertaken a feasibility study um, to assess the public safety buildings and DPW. Um, they have been in a, a state of disrepair and um, their serviceability um, is aged out. And the feasibility study was to determine and come up with some options for uh, relocating and constructing new facilities. The Municipal Buildings Committee presented their three recommended options to the select board. Um, and then there'll be an assessment and a final review of those, and then uh, likely plans to proceed with one of the options. They looked at existing owned properties um, that the town has, uh, the existing sites for the um, fire station and police station headquarters, and also at the Center Street, Cent yes, yeah, Center Street School um, site, which is going to become available due to the new K through two school coming online in January. So at some point, um, not in the not too distant future, after the decisions are made, the town or, or that land becomes an available at the center school, <clears throat> the town will want to look at disposing of the property. And currently it's zoned as municipal open space. And in order to make it um, eligible for reuse, it, the suggestion is that it be rezoned to the, be consistent with the existing zoning in the area, which is residential. So um, the ask before the board is to consider, consider a zoning amendment. It would be primarily a map amendment to rezone that uh, site to residential at the November special town meeting. All right, so in the process would be, we would hold the public hearing uh, in a meeting or two, I guess, right? Yes, yep. Um, yes, board, oh, sorry. Yeah, nope, okay. yeah, that's. I say questions or comments, guys? I mean, I know we touched on this briefly. Why well, would that be rezoned to residential in order to put municipal facilities on it when it's really mercenary? It's not going to have a municipal facility now. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, I missed that, Greg. Right. It will. Um, it's. It was not one of the sites that was recommended in the three um, preferred options. Oh, so, oh, so, you're be, oh so you're saying to rezone it will be it to it back right. to its original state, right? right. Its natural state, with, uh, given its location. Correct. Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that, that makes more sense now. Yep. So everybody good with, uh, so do we, have, do we need a motion to, to vote, to have a, meet, a hearing? Probably do, right? Would someone care to make that motion where we can discuss it in more detail at the meeting? Be like so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Anderson second. All those in favor, Greg Strange, aye. Christopher Anderson. Aye. Deborah Balseric. Peter DeShane. Aye. And I should, Bob had let me know he had to jump out at 8.30. Um, he had a meeting, so. Um, all right, and let's see, back. Oh, where'd the agenda go? Where's Lucy again? Give me a second here, folks. Well, I think. I minutes, think minutes or next? Oh, we have minutes, thank you. Why, why, where's the agenda? Um, Peter, did you, we, now last week, we, remember, we, we pushed the meetings, the minutes till now, because you, so you guys, yeah, I, so I wasn't here last week, and, um, I didn't have to watch that meeting, so I didn't, so, um, no, but this is the meeting the minutes for, for the one before, yeah, yeah we waited for you, Peter, the, uh, minutes from the, um, 
the prior meeting. I don't have the agenda in front of me here for the date. 8.15. From 8.15. Suzanne, is that correct? There are two sets of minutes, 8.15 and 8.29. Okay, so Peter has a motion for 8.15 to be approved. Is there a second? Anderson second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Greg Strange, aye. Deb Balseric? Aye. Christopher Anderson? Aye. Peter Duchesne? Aye. And now for eight, oh yeah, this is dates right there, 829. How did I not see that before? Motion um, minutes for 829. Approve. Motion to approve the minutes from 829. Anderson. Second to Shane. All those in favor? Gregory Shane, aye. Christopher Anderson. Aye. Peter Duchesne. Aye. Deborah Balser. Aye. Oh, okay. Um, I'm good. Yeah, hey, Stephanie, you have anything else? I'm good. I just, just quickly, um, I was talking with Greg today about this. Mid month, um, we learned that the MBTA communities guidelines that we discussed at earlier meetings have been accepted um, or finalized by the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, on the 22nd of August, we were informed that they were opening up the grant application assistance to help communities um, prepare for compliance and also to help the DHC develop their compliance, um, their compliance tool, how they're going to evaluate the compliance evaluation process. So we did submit an application. It was a real quick process that needed to be in by the 30th. This all happened while I was on vacation. I, I knew it was happening um, as I was leaving for vacation. We received notice yesterday that we, I don't think that's coming from my end. There is nothing going on. No, yeah, it's, it's odd. It's been random. Every time somebody speaks. It's probably my computer. It seems like every time I'm not on mute for whatever reason. So, um, we received notice yesterday that we were selected for the first group of communities that are going to receive this technical assistance. There is a kickoff meeting next week. Um, Greg, thank you for letting us know you will be attending. Oh, Wayne will be attending. I probably will be. And um, Dottie as chair of the select board. So you'll be hearing more about that. And I'll also forward to everyone a copy of the final guidelines and the um, town councils, they put a, a summary together when we get these type of notices or um, regulatory changes. So we'll forward that along to all the members oh. of the board as well. Is it better than we thought it was gonna be? Or similar or kind of it, It's similar. There were some things like on the affordable housing, I think, I think depending on how you look at it, they limited or capped that to 10% of the units um, because they want to ensure that it's economic for developers that aren't real experienced in uh, building affordable housing. They wanna make sure that the housing gets built. So they've capped that. Um, there, were, there were some other little restrictions like that. I, I think um, oh, one of the others I know that people were looking for, and these were some of the comments that communities provided, they were looking for energy efficiency requirements. And that's something that um, is not allowed if what you're doing is requiring more energy efficiencies than you would in your general zoning. So those were a couple of things that jumped out at us. Thank you. Okay, all set, Stephanie? Yep. All right, thank you. Um, all right, anybody else have anything? All good? Who wants to bring us home? Motion to adjourn. To Shane. I'll yeah. second it. Well, Sarah gets a second. All those in favor, Greg Shane Jai, Peter Shane. Aye. Deborah Valsaric? Aye. Christopher Anderson? Aye. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, thank you Eve Cat. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Enjoy the rest of your short week. Good night, all.